Hey, how's it going? We're back. Satisfactory Mondays. Yeah, people in the chat saying they weren't sure if I was going to play the game. I'm on update 7. I can't run update 8, unfortunately. I mean, I can, but it runs at like 20 FPS. It's just quite bad. So I'm back. Update 7 as standard. By the way, I actually meant to say maybe I'll try fetch a link. I posted the issue that I have on the satisfactory questions like Q&A website. It's got two upvotes. Nobody seems to have the specific issue I have. A lot of people have the issue where they're stuttering. I just have a consistent low frame rate, like really, really bad. Three, four times worse than what I'm used to. And the settings don't change anything. That's the unusual thing about it. So if I change from the high preset to the low preset, nothing changes in terms of frame rate. If I turn on or off, global illumination doesn't change it. If I turn on or off, um, TAA for anti-aliasing doesn't make a difference. So, unfortunately, um, yeah, just for whatever reason, I have an incompatibility with the game uh, for update eight, which sucks. I'm sure they'll they'll get to it. I just I am a little worried because it seems to be fairly obscure. I don't really see many people with it, but. If I post the link, maybe a few of you guys can go there and upvote it or something. I don't want to game the system or anything, but it would be nice to get some visibility on it before they take their holidays uh, in a couple of weeks. Alright, so today, the plan is to go ahead and upgrade my Crystal Oscillator Factory. So, this build is still not done yet. It's going to be a lot involved in the next video with getting it up and running. And one of the things that it's, it requires is 80 Crystal Oscillators per minute in order to be making supercomputers at the rate that I want. We currently make 60 oscillators per minute. I'm gonna bring that number up from 60 to 105. Um, it's gonna require a pretty decent sized expansion over at the crystal oscillator plant, and we'll have to just figure it out on the fly. I haven't done any real prep or pre-planning with this. We're just gonna kind of figure it out as we go. Uh, I'll just quickly read over the chat before we get moving. Is it DirectX 11? So I've tried every setting. I, I have a degree in game development of, you know, I've. I'm not a genius by any stretch of the imagination, but I did go through all the different settings and nothing seemed to affect it. My get So here's, to go through what I'm experiencing in update eight uh, very quickly here at the beginning. Effectively, the frame rate of this save file runs, I'm currently running at about just under 60 while streaming. It's usually about 80 FPS when I'm not streaming when I'm just doing the regular recordings. And when I go to update 8, this save file runs at about 20 to 25 FPS. But not just that, I can actually show you. Best to just show you guys, and then we'll get into the game proper. Because I have it recorded. Because it's doing some other artifacting things. I'm just going to pause the music for a second as well. Right, so bear with me. I'll see which ones I can bring up here that will show you what's going on. So, here's the game running at the low preset, I think. This is everything turned down to low. Just complete lowest on update 8. And I'm running, you can see in the top right, it's very small, but 27 to 33, 34. Kind of the frame rate that I get. Obviously, it looks really bad like this. Um, don't know if I later... Yes, yeah, so that's DX12. This is everything on low, except for, I think it's cloud quality. This is everything then on high. So, yeah, global illumination is off. So I'm turning everything on. I'm going up to the highest preset and I'm turning everything on here. So we're going from a 30, 30 FPS. I'll turn everything on. And then I'm at 30 FPS, 32 FPS, 33. So same, right? It's the exact same. The settings have just gone from the absolute lowest to the absolute highest. And the frame rate just like hasn't changed. Um, so it's not like completely unwatchable, I guess, but I don't really want to play when I'm used to playing at 60 FPS I don't want to you know more than half that and continue on. There's also other things to it as well that are going on um, This is cool by the way the way like everything's just like pitch black in here now So the other weird thing that's happening. I'm just trying to find it in this little quick video Is when I look at stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So the first time I walked in here, I was like, oh, I don't know if you can spot it, but as you walk in, do you see the way everything's kind of loading? Like, there, it's, um, this is called uh, occlusion culling, and there's a delay to it. It's more delayed than even it would seem the frame rate is. You're never supposed to catch the game ever doing this, loading things right in front of you. 
Um, but I'm noticing it a lot. And I notice it to the point where if I take out my little zipline tool and he spins it, you're just seeing it constantly. So everything that's happening in front is just like blocking out what's behind it. But there's a significant delay. So it looks really weird, I feel like. And I can't not see it. So I'm just having issues. You know, I'm having issues with update 8. Um, so that's a, that's what's called occlusion calling is severely delayed. And um, so I tried going to different parts of the world to see, is it just this build? Because there's lots of these like small little pieces, you know, the one meter walls. It's not. I went to different parts of the world. The frame rate is consistent no matter where I am or what I'm looking at or regardless of the setting that I'm on. Um, however, here's where it kind of gets interesting. If I play the game on a brand new save, which I don't, I don't know if I have a save file for that. Yeah, this would be one. This is it. Brand new save. 150 FPS, max settings, it looks drop dead gorgeous. It looks so nice. So it can run good. It's just that the complexity of my save file means that it, it doesn't. Um, it's not TSR or anything like that. Again, like I said, literally every setting has been toggled on and off. It makes no difference. Um, so yeah, so on... Uh, a blank save, everything runs great. So what I, I have all my save files from every episode, right? I've got like 60 save files. So I loaded up save file from like episode 30. And my frame rate is about half as good. So this, the save I'm at now, we're looking at, you know, 25 FPS. The save, uh, a blank save, we're looking at like 140 FPS. And a save somewhere in between, we're looking at half. So it seems like the more, you know, complex my save file gets, the worse the frame rate is. Now... The thing is, my save files aren't that complex. I'm not let's game it out or something, you know? Like, I'm Kibitz or Total X Clips. They've got worlds and things going on way more complicated than me. I've got, what, like six factories, really, that are in any way sort of big? And even by most people's definition, I don't think you'd describe it as big. I haven't even discovered half the world. So I'm not sure what, like, you know, it just seems to be some sort of incompatibility. I'd say my CPU usage is at something like 19% and my GPU usage is at 20. And uh, I'll just find it really quickly here. But I did actually list everything on the Satisfactory website. Remember, I do, the reason I bring this up is like I have a degree in game development. I know how to report bugs. I worked for a AAA company. Like I, I relatively know what's happening. My best guess is it's just like um this it's just not using my CPU really at all and it's trying to my my computer's brute forcing its way through basically I have an RTX 3090 with 24 gigs of VRAM on it and it's like none of it's being used there's obviously just something not right <laughs> regardless of DirectX or Vulkan or D DX11 doesn't seem to make any difference um, I'm just trying to find the uh, post that I made and then we'll just actually get to playing the game by the way I'm not complaining I know it's experimental I don't mind I'm just letting everybody know why that I'm not able to play it right now uh, properly. So this is the post I made on Satisfactory's Q&A QA website. Like I said, it's got two votes. So people can go upvote that if you want. I'll just drop it in the chat. Maybe someone can upvote it. Only if you consider it a problem. That link should work, I think, if you click it in the chat. Anyway, so there's my hardware. AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, an RTX 3090. I've got 32 gigs of RAM, I've got, and we're, I'm using about 11 gigs of RAM. I thought it was a memory leak at first because it's behaving like one, but uh, we're only using 11 gigs. And then uh, it's on an SSD. So my GPU utilization is at 20, memory is 11. Before the update, I get 60 to 80 FPS in these same crowded areas, all settings on ultra. I've tried using low and high preset, there's no difference in frame rate. Turning off global illumination gives back about 5 FPS from what I could see on average. Turning off TAA has no performance impact. New game, mid game, and late game. Currently at tier 8, just on the stage of automating supercomputers. My factories are spaced out and not that complex. I consider myself an average player at the game. I have about 10 factories in the world and a rail line that connects them. I've only explored two thirds of the map so far, so I don't think I have an especially taxing complex save file. The save file is about 26 to 30 FPS. I have a save file from tier 6, several tens of hours behind where I'm at now, it runs significantly better. Probably around 45 FPS at high settings with global illumination on. A brand new game starting in grassy fields is the game running at 120 FPS. I previously had the pack utility mod active on the save, but no other mods, and the mod is now disabled. Uh, it seems that the complexity of the world is causing a significant dip in performance. It does not seem graphically related as the frame rate is consistent throughout the world and game settings make almost no difference to frame rate. I can provide a save file if requested. 
I should also note I'm getting some stuttering, but not often and no crashes so far because there is a million posts about stuttering. So I really wanted to make a point of being like, I've got a different issue. <laughs> I've got bad frame rate without the stuttering. Um, also that I'm running the normal version of Windows 11 and my NVIDIA drivers are all up to date. Okay, so there we go. So hopefully that uh, addresses why we're sticking to update 7 for the time being. But it's a shame. I was really looking forward to it. It kind of threw my whole week off a bit. Uh, at least for a satisfactory content, I mean. Anyway, let me just catch the chat because I mix, missed a bit here now again. And then we'll just, I promise, hop into the actual game. Um, bonk. Get the music back on. Turn that music down a bit. For some reason my chat is like super zoomed in and can't seemingly zoom out easily. There we go. Got it. All right. So... Um, that's really weird. I don't like computers, but this is entirely out of my knowledge. PC exploded. That's really bad. It looks like TSR. These small bugs like this are exactly why I'm waiting to go to 8. Yeah, well, th that's obviously just performance. You know, switching engines, I kind of thought that there would be some issues like that, but it is an engine upgrade, so I thought maybe. Maybe it'd be okay. Anyway, hmm. export and import the save via the site. Oh, can you do that on the website? I didn't know. I just said I can provide one if they wanted it. No one, I don't think anyone's read my post anyway. It doesn't feel like it the stage. That was posted a few days ago. Anyway, I'm sure it'll get patched as they push it out to early access. I did load a couple worlds just to see. None of my textures would load. Oof. Weird how people with similar build PCs are having completely different experiences. That's why PC gaming sucks. Because <laughs> it's so inconsistent. You know, this PC that I'm rocking costs like, I don't know, five and a half grand or something. Something ridiculous in dollars. But a PlayStation costs five hundred dollars. And... Obviously, I can't do... Like, I like PC gaming, obviously. <laughs> and I love being able to edit and work on it, as well as customize games with mods and things like that. But my god, the investment that you put in, you you just so... You, it's not like a straight curve, you know? You don't get that money back out in terms of performance. PC gaming has been, like, the most erratic, performance, problematic, like, horrible experience I've ever had while gaming. I hate it. I just do it because there's no alternative. But I would totally, I know this is so such a popular opinion, but I would totally like, if Valve just made like a PC and they were like, all you can do on it is just game, but it works. I would totally do that. Like I love my Steam Deck. So just, I would totally love for them to make a gaming PC that just, I don't know, somehow works and has consistent hardware that, that at least that way developers can benchmark for that. You know, everyone's got the same stuff in it. A, a walled garden type thing. Anyway. I know everyone likes having the open and flexibility of a PC, but it drives me crazy how inconsistent games can be on it. But it's not an easy problem to solve. I don't fault the developers at all. It's actually really, really tricky to accommodate so much different hardware. Anyway, I wish my GPU usage was that low. Yeah, if I bring up my task manager, I don't know what I'd be doing now during the stream. But we could check. This is what I always say about this. It's such a waste of money because nothing uses. And then there's like trying to sell you a 4090 and stuff. It's just so ridiculous. These things are so powerful, but nothing uses them. GPU is rocking 40, 49%. CPU at 27. I've never seen my CPU go over 30. I don't think ever in my life. <laughs> Maybe, definitely not 40 or 50. Uh, I can like play two games at the same time, both running badly. <laughs> but I can't just play one game where it runs really well. And it's, I find it so funny. People are like, oh yeah, I get like a 240 hertz monitor. What game can you run at 240 hertz? Because I can't run anything that well. Anyway, that's just me. Even the best optimized games like Battlefield and stuff kind of stop around 150, 160 FPS, I feel like. Anyway, not a problem. I'll, I don't want games to run that good. A solid 60 is fine for me. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. Anyway, just a thought. Have you checked your motherboard BIOS? Make sure it's up to date. I don't even know how to do that, to be quite completely honest with you. But actually, I did think I did it a few months ago. I do say that, like, oh, you know, when it comes to... I worked in a games company, I have a degree in programming, but I'm awful when it comes to hardware, or knowing specifically how hardware works, especially when it comes to PC. I can look at code and optimize things, but I can't necessarily diagnose issues on a PC. I swapped my graphics card to my old PC, and the whole thing broke. Uh, for six weeks, so that was fun. So I tend to stay away from it. DJ, appreciate the, um, hey, you upgraded as well. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so back here we are. Um, I guess I'm just venting, by the way. I just wish, you know, things were a bit more consistent. Who wouldn't want that? 
I'm just venting. But uh, ultimately, it's it's not the worst thing. We can play Update 7, and my other games are running just fine, so not a big deal. Um, so, what we're going to be doing today, just to go over it again, is building on my Crystal Oscillator Factory. The reason that I chose to do this instead of continuing this build just for now is because what we're going to require, if, without running over to it just directly, is... This is the only thing that this place imports, other than, of course, like the oil and stuff that's going to come up from the ground around it, is crystal oscillators. It needs 80 per minute to achieve the amount of supercomputers that I'm targeting. So, in order to... We currently make 60. 60 per minute. And I need 80. So, I'm going to try and raise the amount we make to about 100. 105 is what kind of works out for me uh, in terms of numbers. So, that's what we're going to be doing. I haven't really pre-planned it or figured it out. We're just going to drive over to the factory, bring some excuse me, bring some materials with me, and then look at the problems that we face, which are going to be numerous because that building was built with 60, excuse me again, in mind, not with 100. So there's going to we we'll have to add like extra floors to it, move logistics around, change where the train station is, stuff like that's probably going to have to change. I tried the studio drivers yeah, maybe. I, I, it's just, it doesn't seem like a graphics issue. I don't think it's a driver compatibility. Well, it could be a driver compatibility thing. It almost seems like my CPU is the thing that's not being used more than the GPU. But to me, if they ever came out and said like, oh yeah, we've pushed a fix for AMD CPUs, then I'd be, my ears would perk up. So I just don't think it's anything to do with my... Because the last thing I'll say on the whole performance thing is, consider this. A new game starting new world the game runs immaculately so the graphics in real time the lighting that's all running fine so graphics drivers that doesn't sound like that's what the issue would be to me it sounds more like there's something else to do with the complexity of the save now this save isn't that complex you know me i've got about 10 factories it seems like under the hood the processing of all the logistics is slowing the game dramatically for this update so, why would that be? Well, it seems to me like, for some reason, this logic that's running under the hood, constantly ticking over, checking the rates of all machines and all that, things don't physically move, but they move via math, basically. So, the, all this computing that's happening, it sounds to me like my processor isn't being utilized. Yeah. So, yeah, you could be right. It could be motherboard BIOS. I could check that. I, uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of a Luddite when it comes to that stuff, but I will... It'd be worth, obviously, my time checking that out. Um, I feel like I had issues a while ago with some other games, so I did do that recently. But, um, could check it again. It wasn't actually as bad as I remember it, thinking it would be. Alright, so my inventory, I just need to pack up a bunch of stuff, so we need to get more concrete and some other materials as we go over. I'm getting very low up here, actually. I think about this much. I've actually got concrete in the uh, Explorer, I think, as well. I'm just trying to think. So our up our to-do list, sourcing quartz, configuring trains, building out the top floor. I need some plastic with me then as well. I think I've got some extra materials there, but I just don't want to have to run back this way for a little while. Oh yeah, I meant to say, the core. It's largely been built now. It's only got two of its legs on. The other two legs aren't there yet. But I mean, that's basically it. And I also did the, um, one of the T-junction bridges is in place now as well. So there's only one bridge left to go and two little legs left to go. And then it's just a matter of filling up the place with different things. And i got to put the rooftops on everything, which is uh, also going to be a nightmare. But, um, oh well. It just needs a lot of material. I'm low on concrete and stuff now. This place is taking so much in steel. It's the first time I've actually started to run out of my initial, you know, my little concrete thing that's been going for such a long time out that way. Uh, yeah, let's grab what's little unique things from in here. Don't need heat sinks. All right, that's good enough. Let's uh, let's go with that then. Good evening, greetings. Uh, Tia said they were having issues with the normal drivers. Hmm. Left a comment to one of the Skylines video with a link for how a highway is supposed to look like when it has a roundabout as an exit entrance. But it got deleted. I guess because I had a link. Oh, right. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, that's just a YouTube automatic thing. Um, but I appreciate that. You could, If you have the time, you could always join my Discord and post it in there. 
won't get deleted. I'm just that uh, it's auto saving right now, by the way. Hey Marnus. New player tip, make all the concrete. <laughs> Could be an issue with assets not being brought from old updates correctly. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It doesn't seem like an asset issue. It, it like that it wouldn't really I I don't think make much sense. If they're they're either in there or they're not. If things weren't loading correctly, or if you were looking at things and they were distorted, or, you know, the models were distorted, their meshes were broken, animations were broken, or something, then I would kind of be more inclined to agree, but everything looks okay. It just seems like the more complex your world, world gets, at least for me, the slower it behaves. I think the game is just not utilizing or understanding how to use my CPU at all. It's like using one thread, you know, probably, instead of utilizing multiple. All right, so nice and close by. This is the factory that we're going to be working on. We have some stuff here already. We could kind of walk through it just really quickly, get the lay of the land, see how this place operates, and then see what our job is going to be. Thanks for the tip. We'll send it there. No worries. Discord.gg slash WDP. Shout out to Dean again for the channel membership, by the way. Thank you. I guess he upgraded. I don't think it gave a notice for just an upgrade. Those if you become a new one, but shout out. The video was stuck just for a second. It was, yeah, it was just auto saving. Sorry, the auto save can take a little while. Okay, so this is my crystal oscillator build, and it makes 60 crystal oscillators per minute. Now, Interestingly, we set it up to make radio control units relatively easily up on the top floor. But I'm probably going to delete that area just for a little while. It hasn't been functioning for a while because it needs computers. And I decommissioned my computer factory while we're building the new supercomputer slash computer factory, right? The uh, big shell in the distance there, towering over everything, dominating the skyline. So just hop into this real quick. These manufacturers are doing the radio control units. So those are the ones that are paused. But all the other ones are doing crystal oscillators. So this room in here, crystal oscillators, and then below and below and below. Now the way this place works and how we're going to have to redesign and reconfigure it is I'm probably going to remove these and just build out another room similar to that one doing crystal oscillators. Because the problem is that below... Yeah. All the material for crystal oscillators comes up here. So there's three lanes. One, two, three. They're all being fed up that way and being divided between two floors, right? So this splitter set up here is just saying, like, some of it's going in there and half of it's going in there. And then what comes out is crystal oscillators merging in here, the two together merge in. So that it looks more complicated than it is. These don't do anything, you know? They're just there for the height. So, um, hmm. And interestingly, they're paused. They're probably backed up, if anything. I wouldn't imagine they're low on anything. Yeah, they're just backed up. So that's, that's fine. Yeah, so 60 per minute. We need to bring it up to 105 per minute, which means we need 54 manufacturers. There's currently 32. That's going to be my target, building this place out with 54 in mind. But what it means is we're going to have to cut this away. We'll head downstairs again. So the left lane is sending everything towards what's needed for crystal oscillators and the right lane is sending everything forward towards what's needed for radio control units. We're basically going to delete the radio control units out of this place and then we'll put them in later somewhere else because it's not that difficult because this stuff is all here anyway. I'll just clear a little bit of my inventory for a moment. And that lane was for computers. That's the one thing that we don't supply these guys with at the moment. 60 is good. Yeah, I thought it was good, but we need 80 for supercomputers. How many super... I can't even remember how many supercomputers I'm planning on making, but it requires quite a bit of crystal oscillators. We could have a look, actually, maybe. Super... Comp. Oh, it's because I want to make computers, is it? 
Yeah, and I need circuit boards and crystal oscillators. At least that's the way I'm doing it, so it requires quite a bunch. And I could just bring it up to 80, but I think I should bring it up to more than I need, right? I, I need 80, but it'd be nice to get it to 105. It's an even number for the amount of machines I would need. And that way, um, there's some left over if I need them for something else. I don't have to redesign this area too much. It all goes into a logistics room, which is nice, and that'll stay intact. How many megawatts do you have? Don't know. Um... Uh, my max consumption is 32,000. Current consumption is 20. It seems to always be around 20. So 20,000 megawatts and my capacity is just under 30,000. So I haven't powered on the new build yet. That's going to give me 7,000 power and then I think consume something like 12. So the net should be something like 5 or 6. We should have enough. But if all machines were to turn on suddenly together, uh, I'd have a problem. That's not going to happen. <laughs> After we do the supercomputer factory, then it's batteries, and then it's nuclear. I don't really want to expand power until I do nuclear, but I might have to a little bit. Alright, so just clear this area away again. Okay, we can leave it like that. So now the factory just makes crystal oscillators. We've just taken away the radio control units part. Um, but that's freed up the space now to send more stuff up, because this is going to be too much for one belt to handle, I think. We'll have to check those amounts in just a moment. Um, so, is there any way to get rid of some of these things? I guess I'll just hold on to it. Alright, I'm not playing on experimental, I talked with that at the very beginning, it doesn't run very well for me. It runs really badly in fact, and there's lots of other issues with it too, in terms of things are just popping in and out all over the place, and if I change settings it doesn't make any difference. Just talked about it for like 20 minutes, so at the very beginning of the stream if you want to see it, how it looks for me, and also my reasoning for not playing it right now, you can just go back in the video a bit. Um, why not bring it to that sweet 120? I'll show you why. So, brace yourselves, you might get blinded. Boom. Uh, so currently, this is the setup for crystal oscillators that I have. So effectively, how many manufacturers making crystal oscillators 100%? 32. With 32 manufacturers, we make 60 crystal oscillators as per my recipes, right? So this is the entire build. It's not that complicated, really. We have eight refiners doing copper ore to ingots, 20 refiners doing caterium ore to caterium ingots, goes on to be made into copper sheets, into quick wire. The copper sheets and quick wire become AI limiters. Rubber actually comes from a different place, so this isn't in the factory. This is in a, the oil processing plants, but we currently use 420 rubber. And then we have 1,000 quartz, 600 raw quartz, uh, sorry, quartz crystal refined. And then in the final manufacture, these three come together to make 60 crystal oscillators, right, and 32 manufacturers. I then had this separate thing for when I added on radio control units. All we had to do was ship in aluminum casing and computers, and then mixing it with the crystal oscillators that were here, we could make radio control units. We don't need to do that anymore. We could do it later uh, at some point. So you asked, why not make it 150? I wanted to see, you want to go up in intervals of eight or four or two, depending on how you want to look at it. But intervals of eight on this number give me a nice even number on this side. So if I go up to 40, will make 75 crystal oscillators. If I go up to 43, not a very nice number. 80.625, nobody likes that. If I go up to 54, pretty close. Is it 56? There we go, sorry, 56. Intervals of 8. We get 105. 
Um, so trying to get it to 120, I don't know what we'd need for that. What would it be, 64? Could be done, but then I guess it just seems like maybe more than I need. I didn't think that was going to divide evenly, but it did. <laughs> so you could go to 120, I guess, and just literally double what we've got. But that is a lot. You know, it's 64 manufacturers. And do I need it? I don't know. Probably not. I kind of want to just... Basically, I just need 80. And then I wanted to get a nice round number or even number to give me something back. So I was going with 105 per minute. And that leaves me 25 per minute not being used. Um, so if we look at the raw numbers going in then, what I like to do is then check. It's like, okay, is any of this stuff too big for a belt to handle? Obviously, the raw quartz is. So we'd need multiple lines of raw quartz coming in now. We'd need multiple lines of Caterium ore as well. Although it goes into a truck station, actually, so that wouldn't be difficult. Because um, there's two outputs anyway. Quick wire 2100 is quite a high number as well, so that's three lines at least. But... That would be it. That would be it. So that's what we're going to try and do. And it's kind of hard to know even where to start when you're trying to edit a factory effectively. Because this place... Uh, you know, it's... It was built with these numbers in mind. It doesn't really have the space for an easy expansion. But we do also have a lot of room out the front that isn't really being used by anything. It's just empty space that I could uh, build a floor at that way. So I just want to get out and have a look at this area. Oh, my frame rate's not very good even in here. There we go. So yeah. Like I could bring the whole factory out a bit, you know, if I wanted to. There's no real reason not to. It's mostly empty space here. The archway thing will be cur curling through a bit, but other than that, I think we'd be fine. So maybe I'll do that. It's obviously a big expansion. I don't have to put all the pillars and stuff in now, but if I just bring the floors out, that gives us a lot more floor space to work with in order to just double up pretty much these floors here. Because there's no space at the back. It hits the cliffs and stuff. And there's no space at the back of this side because, again, the terrain starts to rise up and go a bit weird. Yeah, so you can't really go any further up back that way. So if you want more of these machines, I could stack these on top of each other. Be okay with doing that. Lots of space above them. Could easily pop the uh, these on top of each other. So I'd say that's done and dusted. And then use all this space maybe for the refiners. And that way we have the water beneath them still. Because there's a lot of water downstairs being fed up to these things. So that, that's probably what we'll do. Hey, Jerry. Is there a way to delete all the vehicles? Maybe it's a problem with the new physics. I don't think it is the new physics, personally speaking. Physics only runs when you're nearby it. So, um, it wouldn't make any sense that, let's say you have, uh, you know, 50 vehicles over here doing loops or whatever, doing bounces off things. It doesn't matter. If you're not there and you can't see it, it's not doing that really. What's actually happening when you're looking at a vehicle doing its route is it creates nodes on a path and then mathematically it just follows that path as a piece of data. There is no 3D model because it's I'm not there. I can't see it, so why would it be there? If there's no 3D model, there's no physics. This is why, um, small tangent, but um, listening to a lot of podcasters lately talking about Starfield and why Starfield can't run at 30 FP or can't run at 60, on console and people are like oh the physics you know you walk into a room and you can pick up everything um and then it's tracking all these objects on multiple planets all across the game at the same time and, and they're like that's what's buckling the frame rate and that's not at all what's happening in fact none of that has any impact on the frame rate you could have a 50 million objects in the game or you could have five it doesn't make any difference all it's doing is a piece of data gets stored either in ram but most likely on your hard drive for the save because it's not in use 99.9% .9 of the time. What would tank your frame rate is if you went to a room and you stacked all the items up and then you threw a grenade at them, and then you'd notice your frame rate dip because it's, it is trying to do the physics then for all the items. But even if they were static and just sitting on a table, they're not active anymore. Physics turns off until they get a collision or a, uh, a fizz object collision. So uh, there you go. <laughs> hey, Scuba. 
All right, so I think I've got the idea in mind. What we'll have to do is just start expanding out this floor. Have I got what I need? I've got plastic and concrete, so let's go. I have to chop away all my lovely uh, walls and stuff, though. So how many of these machines did I need then? So I can just compare. We're going from 32 manufacturers to 56. So for copper refineries, we're going from 8 to 14. I might actually have to write this down. Because I just need to keep track of how many. So copper is going from 8 to 14. Um, Caterium is going from 20. 20 Caterium refineries to 35. And even 35 as well, which is nice. Uh, so let's just one second. Copper. Caterium. All right. So then the other one is doing copper sheets. So we had 13.33. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm looking at my Excel. And that's going to 23.3. And this will give me an idea how many refineries I need. Then we'll go get the materials. We can start plopping them down. And then for constructors, we're going from 20 constructors to 35. We don't have to worry about that right now. All right, cool. How's it going, Darren? Finally managed to catch a stream. Yeah, it's good. I still haven't made you a mod. Oh, we, you're not a mod anymore. <laughs> Forgot that. Uh, but yeah, no, it's going good. Don't really have much. Everything's good. You know, no, no problems are... What's the saying? It's like, if you don't have any problems, then it's a good problem to have or something. Something like that. I can't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have much to to say, I guess. Like, nothing's out of the ordinary is happening, but in a way, things are just good. Series on YouTube are doing well. I'm feeling healthy enough. Rosie's doing good. Cats are good. Parents are fine. You know, all all is good at the moment. All is well. Uh, right, so, yeah, I get distracted. Let's just uh, start building this place out then. So, I wonder, can I fly just outside the wall? I think I can. And then we can start just bringing out the floor with me. In fact, just to get the height correct, I'll probably just delete some of the walls. Do I have space in my inventory for this? Yeah. All right, let's try to speed up and get some stuff done now. We know what needs to be done. So, I'll just first off just dump some crap that I don't need. And then we'll just start removing these walls, unfortunately. It took me such a long time to put those in. Okay, let's just do this. Ah, nice open air facility. See, if I was on the new update, I could just delete these windows in one easy go because they are blueprints. But, uh, update doesn't run well for me, so. How many of these crystal oscillators are going to control units? That's a good question, actually. Let me check that. Well, currently, 18.75 were going to radio control units. That's a great question because I actually didn't factor that in. But yeah, if I make 105, that means 80 are going to supercomputers. And then the remaining 25 are pretty much all going to radio control units. I'm left with 7. 7.25. If I don't increase the amount of radio control units. I make 15 radio control units. Do you think that's enough? I don't know what I need them for. <laughs> it's great that you're streaming, so I have something good to watch while editing. Hey, Lady H.A. Hey? Yeah, I appreciate it. Shout out to the people at the beginning of the stream that said, like, you know, they have a little bit of a bored Monday and they're happy to see me and get a little distracted with stuff. I appreciate that. People were saying the same with City Skylines. Not to bring the tone down, but some people say as well, you know, I don't know, when they're feeling a bit down, it's just nice to have a kind of good, consistent distraction. I can relate to that. That's why it can be really annoying when you do plan on watching someone, you're like waiting for their content, and then it's not there. I feel quite bad, because I used to be always late with my streams previously. I never had a great set schedule anyway, but at least on YouTube so far, I haven't missed one. So I feel good about that, but I only do one a week. I'm trying to... I'll slowly increase them when I feel more and more confident that I'll keep hitting them. Rather than go out the gate with like, I'm doing five a week, and then you miss like three of them. All right. So we'll build this floor out. We'll hop down here, cut this area away. And then just extend these floors. I 
And it's a times two foundation. Yeah, that's fine. My frame rate goes really bad here. I think I'm between two biomes. I'm pretty sure I am, actually, because if I stand over there, the lighting changes. <laughs> so, like, it goes from how it looks now to, like, a kind of more foggy look. And they've talked about that as well, where if you're on the edge of two biomes, or world tiles, as they call it, uh, things can be a little finicky. At least you admit it, I know. <laughs> I can say it now, after all this time, I was late to my streams. <laughs> Alright, we'll just bring this all the way out 10 every time. Love it. All right, great. God, the time I spent on doing that corner specifically, because it was such a nightmare to get lined up. Nice. Anyway, maybe in a hundred years we can automate as much as this. <laughs> That'd be cool. The city skylines bits are great. Love the way you explain what you're doing and why. Thank you. Yeah, I, was, I posted on Twitter just today at what Darren plays. You haven't followed me there uh, i mostly just tweet about video updates on that that account and stuff you know just updates to content but um i just felt the need to say i was just surprised how well that series is doing so far for me like it's nothing compared to big cities youtubers and everything not that it should be but um it's way more than i expected it got like fifty thousand views or something in the first week the first episode and i just thought because cities content so dominated by people who are really re like genuinely really good at the game like they build basically real cities and I'm coming in here like oh I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> um, so I just didn't really think I'd gain much of an audience but I wanted to learn and play the game a bit more on lead up to City Skylines 2 and I'd played it before and people had asked me to play it um, but I just always was intimidated by you know all the mods people use and the creative tools and assets they use but yeah the response has been really really great so far I'm glad I did and it's, to be quite frank, it's a little easier to record and make because I don't have to do like crazy amounts of planning beforehand. Just maybe a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Whereas in this series, I mean, I admittedly, I put it on myself, but I'm like, I always want to show something new because it takes so long to get further and further into the game for all the different tiers. It just means that things take a very long time to do and make videos on. Appreciate it. Uh, shout out to all the channel members in the chat as well. Um, don't drones need RCU? Well, yeah, but you don't automate them. They just need them to be built. That's fine. I was wondering what they're needed for, like, in a machine, you know? Because you could make one per minute and it would probably be enough for me then. Um, but I currently make 15 radio control units per minute, and it takes 10 to make a drone. So obviously I'm not making a drone every minute, you know? So that's fine. Oh, thanks Alphabet as well, by the way, for the kind words. Happy Juneteenth, we appreciate the consistent streams too. Thanks, Ryan. You make CS look easy, tried it and tanked it. Well, the first few times I played it, I, I really did suck, but I, before I did my first episode, I put like 30 more hours into just learning different things and trying to make things look good and realistic. Um, so I think if you were to put 30 hours into the game, knowing that you're going to try to be playing it in front of other people. Basically, it's not as easy as it looks sometimes for me, even, <laughs> you know. I'll put more time into it than people think. And I'm still learning. It was great, because people pointed out some things in the first, second, and third episode, like to do with certain roads and traffic, and tools that were in the mods that I didn't even know about, where you can like actually spe specify what lanes go into what and stuff. So that was cool. Um, how's streaming on YouTube been for you? Is it different than Twitch? Honestly, it's not really much different for me. Um, I actually don't have view count visible, but I see the view count afterwards. And uh, the views are slightly higher. The amount of subscribers I have is actually lower. 
Well, overall it's higher, but per stream it's lower, if that makes sense. Like, people become channel members on videos. So overall I've got, like, I think nearly 200 channel members, whereas on Twitch, I think I usually had about 100, something like that. Can't quite remember now, to be honest. Do I have no plastic left? Oh. I'll have to go grab some. Um... I don't know. The basic thing is, I do this on Mondays anyway. I go through and prepare for the next episode. So I decided, why not stream it anyway? I really don't look at it as like, you know, how viable is it or whatever. Obviously, if no one was watching I, I, and it just slowly phased out, I would just stop doing it. Um, but yeah, so far it's been pretty good. Totally, totally good. Loads of people were saying like, um, well, actually, I won't say that, but... um. I was going to say that, yeah, you get less, ch you get, because there's no Prime subscription, right, on Twitch there's Twitch Prime, which is basically, if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription to give to a channel, and they get the benefit, they get the $2.50, but a lot of people have that, so you end up getting like 30 people that are like, yeah, I'll give my free sub to this person, costs nothing to me, and they end up getting like, you know, 40 or $50 from it, and that's great. So, you can't, I kind of miss that, I suppose. It feels like you get a lot less subscriptions and channel memberships here. Um, but I think the Super Chat system is better, and also the breakdown, it's not 50-50, it's like 70-30. So, I suppose it all probably works out the same and evens out in the end. How do you schedule your time for videos? I don't. I just do it every day. Because I just feel like it's almost impossible, at least for me, in a game like this, to schedule it. Because I just don't know, how long is this going to take me? Like, how can I work that out? I have no idea. You know, it's just done when it's done. <laughs> so it's really hard to go like, I'm going to just do four hours today and eight tomorrow or 12 the next day, whatever. I basically just wake up. First thing I do is I go in, check some emails, and then I just immediately get playing some games. And um, setting things up to get them ready to record. So... Today I did a little City Skylines this morning, just check, testing um, a couple mods that were recommended to me. Planning out where the next phase of expansion is going to be, and then pretty much the time rolled around to, to do this. And I hopped into this game for about an hour beforehand and said, okay, what we're going to do is build out this factory, because I need to. YouTube Premium should include free channel membership, in my opinion. That'd be cool. I think channel memberships should be should give you um, no ads. That's really the big thing. It's hard to convince a person to become a channel member because what do you get? Like, what do you get back for it? You know, you don't get anything. <laughs> you get emotes, and I say thanks. And you, you know, I'll put your name in the credits. And I try to release videos early, but it's all up to me what I can try to get. So I feel like if you're a channel member, you should at least have no ads. And I wish that could be possible, but it's just not. YouTube Premium gives you no ads. What did I do with the plastic I was carrying, by the way? Did I set up another box? Can't remember if I did. I remember I made two boxes down here. <laughs> I must have done it and then just literally just lost it. Yeah, so that just had concrete in it. I set one up on the other side, didn't I? I think or maybe upstairs. So I had a whole load of plastic with me. Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right. I suppose I don't need to throw this plastic out there just yet until we know the spacing. I was just thinking of it. I guess logically, oh my god, a lot might have to change actually, unless I just build it separately. Do you think it's better to tear out all of these machines and rebuild them from the ground up, kind of with all the water pipes and stuff that's downstairs? Or just build out a whole new section here? <laughs> I'm leaning towards that because it's obviously easier. I'll show you what I mean by downstairs, right? Because this already has all its stuff ready to go. We run downstairs just one tier. We get to H2O extraction. And all these pipes are already set up. Yeah, that's too much work to redo. I think I should just leave that as is. And we can calculate the rates and break stuff off in terms of belts, but that'd, that'd be it. I think I'd leave that. Anyway, um, I don't get ads on YouTube or Twitch. Well, yeah, obviously people might use ad blocker. That's up to you, I guess. I don't use ad blocker on anything. 
And I don't say that because I'm a YouTuber. I just never did. I, just, I don't know. I just don't really feel like it's right. But each to their own. You all, I don't judge anybody for doing it. Is this a door that leads into a wall? Oh, that's great. About to hit an autosave. I'll just wait for that. Let me catch the uh, chat. Um, I didn't know YouTube keeps ads for members. Yeah, channel members do not... It still has ads. It sucks. It would be nice if they at least removed them from live streams, if you remember. Yeah, totally. I don't know why they don't. I really... Like, it just seems strange. Like, why not? I don't... I, don't, I really don't see why not. Could sell it as an ad blocker absolution for those who never use the ads anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well, they have YouTube Premium. If you get YouTube Premium, which I do recommend, I, I've had it for years, you don't get any ads on YouTube. So, that's great. And the creator, the person who made the video, actually gets more revenue from a person if they have YouTube Premium. So that's great. It's a win-win. Everybody wins. If you don't mind paying the money, you're also winning because you're not getting ads. YouTube gets money from you. They don't have to um, facilitate ads. And the creator doesn't have to run ads. People have a better viewing experience and they get more money from not running it. Our country doesn't allow it. That's fun. What country are you from that doesn't allow ads on the internet? That's some autosave. Yeah, it's really slow when I'm streaming. It's not nearly as slow when I'm not. I, it just seems to be when I'm streaming, it goes really, really slow. Um, but it did start getting way slower since I started building that big shell area. Like, demonstrably so. That area out there, which we can see, that's one. There's six of those. And each one is made up of like one meter bits. Oh, that's cool. I can see my reflection. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, since I added that, that the game has slowed significantly for autosave. Um, anyway, what was I doing down here? Oh, yeah, we were looking at... Okay, yeah, so I think I am going to build it out separately. So it's kind of a bit strange. It's almost like saying this is going to be 32 crystal oscillators, and then there's going to be another factory next to this one that does its own set of... Um, refinement kind of all right so the next floor height is up here and that's a okay we can use blueprints for this one then thankfully this is gonna be a pain can I fly here I can't tell if that's on the wall and the um, floor or not. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. That's it there, I think. Once one is down, it's okay. Oh, it's the other way around, though. It's like concrete on the bottom. Oh, it's asphalt on the bottom. Oh, I see. Hey, a community gift. Gifted a membership. Jerry, appreciate that. And it went to Stuart Green. There you go. Thank you. YouTube Premium is the way to go. It is indeed. I only bought something from an ad one time in my life, so ads seem pointless. Um, I think um, I used to feel that way, and then I kind of started noticing how I don't think there is... I think they are effective, <laughs> because otherwise they just wouldn't do them. But when you run an ad as a company, you can literally see your sales go up, you know? So I feel like they don't do it, they wouldn't do it if it didn't work. Some ads are obviously way less effective than others, but also it's brand awareness. You know, you might see an ad for McDonald's and go like, well, I didn't have McDonald's this week, but it, you know, you kind of think about it. Or when you see something enough, you go like, yeah, I've seen that. Oh yeah, like I've seen that thing. Like it's a legit product, whatever it is. I've certainly fallen into that trap a few times where it's like, you just see something over the span of a couple weeks, and then maybe you saw it in a shop then or something. Unrelated. And you're like, oh yeah, like I've seen that before. Because you saw it in an ad once. It wasn't like the ad drove you to immediately go and buy it. It was more just like brand awareness that you recognize the item, and then when you saw it, it's kind of legitimized, I guess, in your head. Hey, thanks, by the way, again. 
Um, ads are actually only really designed to bring a product. To oh, there you go. It's your attention. Actual purchases are a bonus and drive you to the store. Yeah, it's, I would agree with that. Food ads are the worst for me because it just it plants that seed in your head like, oh, KFC. <laughs> it's like I could get KFC. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm just going to paint this out now pretty quick. I was just making sure that I was doing it correctly before I wanted to do too much of it. Where this railway is, is probably going to change at some point as well. I'll have to figure out a different way for it to go through here. Alright, I've extended our floor. There is going to be this spire thing going through it, but not much I can do about that. Did leave an awfully big gap between all these. So, let me just check what these different things are doing. So there's... The first set of refineries are just over here. And I think they just take up straight copper. Copper ore and water, and they make ingots. That then flows out and around into these ones, and it gets made into copper sheets. Okay. That's straightforward. And they go down to make quick wire over there. Yeah. These are making Caterium. They're backed up as well right now. Could go out further as well if we needed to. That's kind of tempting. So the Caterium, I need 15 more of these. 15 more. Well, we could build them together. Oh, yeah. Oh, they would have been blueprinted. I think I deleted all these blueprints. Refinery Caterium. Oh, no, there it is. That'll be the one. Yeah, so if we just get the spacing right, we can put these next to each other. So that's the input side, and that's the output this way. And there's two groups of ten here, I think. So again, we could build two groups of ten and just cut away five on the opposite side, and then the opposite side of that, feed them in copper again. Uh, the assemblers, I mean. Yep, that would work. Alright, so yeah, let's just chop this stuff away then. Give ourselves the space to work with. How much space between? Just a gap of one might be enough. Great stream as always, looking forward to the next episode. Have a great day, see you, Lynn. I feel like we're just getting started. <laughs> I haven't actually done anything other than just cut away walls. Now I want McDonald's. So do I. Hey, Bitmark. I think of YouTube ads as, has commercials on TV. I don't have TV anymore. I only watch YouTube. Pretty much. Used to watch Twitch, but I, since I stopped going on, to, since I stopped streaming there, I basically stopped using it now completely. The ads on Twitch are unbelievable, so egregious. Um, but you can also get Twitch Turbo to remove those ads. But unlike YouTube, it doesn't affect the creator; it doesn't give them anything. So you're actually hurting creators by using it, I guess, um, and just giving Amazon more money. All right, so we need ten more of these. I'm just trying to think how to best lay these out. If we go blueprint mode, they actually would line up and then rotate them this way to feed in. Yeah, that could work. I'll just give them a decent amount of space, something like there, and we could just start moving them in. Now, that Caterium blueprint has a lift, but it's aiming up. The other one's aimed down. It's kind of strange. Shouldn't it have a floor hole or something? I might have to load this into blueprint designer first before I use it, because it could be... Manufacturers for the... What does it say? It doesn't say anything. Because <laughs> I used to have tons of these, and I'd make little modifications to them. So we'll have to load one up before we actually start putting them down. Uh, but yeah, we could do that. Let's just do that now. It's easier when you don't watch Twitch anymore. Because you're one regular stream moved to YouTube. Yes, indeed. Hey, TMD. It's going good. Thank you. Since you're building Big Shell on stream, you think of a time lapse as construction for a video in the main series? Uh, no, that'd be almost impossible to do. I would need—I would have needed someone 
to play with me multiplayer and sit still and watch me build it. And that way you could time lapse it. But I can't time lapse it because I did, don't have everything recorded, if that makes sense. So, that it would have been cool for a video and stuff, but I just didn't have the means to kind of do all that, so, or the time. Yeah, I'm not planning on making a special video for it, uh, going through that build or anything. I don't really do edited or special videos anymore, I just do playthroughs. So, people can check it out in the playthrough or not. I'll give it to another YouTuber if they want to just do a video on it. They could pay me. <laughs> How about that? I'll give it to Bits or someone to walk through, but for a fee. Um, I want 30% want of the revenue. I need to see what I need for these things. So, first off, I need a blueprint designer. I can build that right now. Okay, good. Then I need to see what it wants for just even one of these. What am I missing? I need some reinforced plates and motors and quartz crystal. Okay. Well, we got the quartz crystal right there. And we got loads of uh, storage containers at the back that should have plenty of stuff for me. Yeah, Twitch ads are... Twitch ads are just... You can't skip them. That's the thing. At least on YouTube, almost all the ads you can skip. But they'll play, Twitch will play like eight in your face and you can't skip them. And I'm like, that's that's just so ridiculous. Um, oh no, I don't have any motors here, do I? Oh, I do. All right. All right, we got everything. Turbo FA FAQ states, plus Twitch partners and affiliates still earn ad revenue from Turbo subscribers who watch their channel. Really? That might be that might be new, because I remember talking with others, like a much higher up streamer than me, who, who was telling me about that, that you don't get anything from it as a creator, which is why none of, the, which is why you'll never hear a Twitch streamer say, get Turbo. Because, from what I heard, anyway, so... That's interesting. I mean, I read the Turbo Fact as well, and I just don't... Well, maybe not the fact, or at least the sign-up process. What's the stuff on the front page of signing up to it? I just don't remember that. Damn, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. If that's what it says, uh, clearly I am. See, on YouTube, what it'll say in the analytics is it says premium revenue. And it says, like, this is revenue from people who have premium. It doesn't say that on the back end of Twitch, but it does say ad revenue. So if it just is saying that they otherwise lump it into ad revenue, that's kind of interesting then. Yes, yeah, so this is a refinery that was designed somewhere else. I think I've lost the original designs of those ones. I'll have to rebuild them. Just quickly double check. I mean, if this is Caterium. Yeah. All right, we'll just put that in place then, and then see what these did different. So they've got floor holes and water going down. And they have the little signs on top, which I think I have already in place. Nice. Sorry, Rosie was just showing me something. Uh, morning from California. Just popping in to see what's happening. First time viewing live stream, usually watch the videos. <clears throat> hey, yeah, so anyone who has just joined, then good morning. Um, so effectively, I'm expanding out my crystal oscillator factory because we need 80 crystal oscillators per minute to do the big shell building that I'm doing, doing supercomputers. So I currently make 60, but I need 80. So I'm going to build it up to 105 and use the remaining to make the radio control units. So what we've done so far is I've basically removed the radio control unit components at the back. We've expanded out a floor out this way. And I'm now going to basically add on the extra machines that are required here before we source the materials. Now, unfortunately, I deleted the blueprint that was doing this initially. So I'm just going to recreate it. Uh, and also, unfortunately, I don't think I can do floor holes with this. Well, we could put them in manually. I don't mind doing that. Something like that's okay. Chop that. Was that the input? Yeah, it was. Yeah. This is the same, though. That's fine. And then we just need to paint it the proper colors. Do I have power out here? Of course I don't. Um, grab. All 
Right, I can copy those signs. Are they just done the same over that way? I think so. Yeah, because that's the input. I was going to say it looks higher up. These would be lower down. Yeah, good. All right, and they're just numbers. Easy enough. All right, and then color-wise, I've probably lost these colors as well. Oh, no, actually. I think that's basically it. If not, I can just recolor everything anyway. So we'll need... Hmm. Yeah, I'd actually just rather do this manually, not even use blueprints. Read the blueprints. Because <laughs> the logic of hooking everything up is still going to have to be done anyway. We won't blueprint it, we'll just put them down ourselves. So I need 15. Alright, so I'm just going to go fetch the materials needed for all 15 of these, and then we can get started actually putting this stuff down. Alright. Sorry for such a lengthy talk about ad revenue. I'm not in it for the money, I swear. Although it is my job. <laughs> um, just get rid of some of this stuff. Things that I'm not going to need. So I need more motors, steel pipes, and copper sheets. All right, yeah, I'll just drive out to the other area. It's got, oh, I might not have to actually. We do have stuff up here, but I think for the motors I might have to. Yeah, so let's just get driving. Amazon versus Google is the lesser of two evils. <laughs> I've just been doing it all I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Twitch is kind of um, spiraling at the moment, or at least it feels that way. I don't know what their traffic is actually doing. Still have to do the um, tops of the pillars, actually. Those are the things you gotta do. I know, I know. It says no parking, but I'm just gonna break my own rules. Just, it's just for a minute. Hopefully, I don't get a ticket. All right, so steel pipes, we needed 450. Copper sheets are up there. And then motors. All right, that's enough for now. We'll just head over. And uh, we can start building these refineries properly. So nice driving around this area, smooth, 60 FPS. <laughs> uh, watching from, from Kazakhstan, god damn. Subscribe recently, love your satisfactory and Skylines vids. Good luck on the, uh, thank you, appreciate that. Good luck on the oscillator factory. For me it's either moving to kick, which is still in beta. Or YouTube. I know I'll be starting from scratch if I do. Never validated it with a creator, though. We have to trust Twitch, which is nothing I feel comfortable with right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. I mean, I talked to a partnered streamer who had about a thousand concurrent viewers, and they were the one that told me that. And then when I read it, when signing up to Turbo, I didn't see anything about that. But if that's what it says in the FAQ, either they added it as a feature... Dividing up the revenue that way, or maybe it was always there and it was just under the like the terminology of ad revenue anyway. That could be the case. I don't know. Well, 
Okay, so let's get building. So we need to build out 15 more refineries for Caterium ingots, if I recall correctly. Yeah, 20, so we currently have 20. We're going up to 35. Now we'll try to build them roughly in the same style if we can. I think they are next to each other, like properly next to each other. Grab one of these. And the outputs are going to face the middle. So, yeah, just to give myself some initial space on this group. Actually, just one last thing. Maybe I should just check really quickly below. What's what's the situation down here? Yeah, that's fine. Good. Okay, so we've got space just to feed up everything it needs, you know? Just making sure. So we'll keep it level. If I can. Because it's a blueprint, it's line that's coming out the center of it isn't quite aligned with where you'd think it would be, but somewhere there I think is good. there. Alright, so we'll do 10 and then just 5. All right, there we go. There's our tent. And as far as I remember, none of these are over underclocked or overclocked or anything like that. I'll just paste all these settings in, and we'll do our other five. I have to work out the water that's needed for a group of fifteen. Um, so maybe just so I can kind of even it out to where the other one was, just make sure the spacing is good on these. Actually, yeah, just realized maybe I should line them up properly. So that line is pretty much in the center of a foundation, and so is that one. Ah, oh, so it was this one. So I did do it okay. That was total happenstance. Alright, so that means that if we go out here, the middle of these two should be the center where the glass would go. Yeah. So I'll try to just fly and put that in the... Whoops. Put that in the same position that the other one is in. Matching that line in the center. And you want to bring it pretty much as close as you can, right? I think there? That should mean that we've got even space between them now. Oh, well, it looks good. I think I did it. Let's just see. Yeah, looks good to me. All right, great. That was relatively painless. Sometimes you can spend a very long time doing those little things. Uh, so, two, three, four, five. So that's all we're sticking with. Fifteen. I'll move this thing here. We could actually cut away this part of the building if I wanted to. Anyway, hey Sam, were you, uh, when are you signing your $100 million bucks cake deal? Well, it, we're in the negotiation phase at the moment, you know, don't want to, I can't say anything, that we're, I'm NDA'd uh, and embargoed for now, but we're in talks, we're in talks. Have you tried Experimental 8.0.2 yet? That plus switching from TSR to the old NTA listing fixed all performance issues for me. Uh, yes, I tried it this morning, so unless there's been a patch today. And uh, changing options have has literally zero effect. I even showed it on stream at the very beginning of this stream. The FPS doesn't change, excuse me, whether I turn on global illumination, TAA, or anything. Low preset to ultra preset and toggle on all the little supplemental options. Literally no performance change. It just stays. It's almost like it's locked. 
to 28 FPS or something. Um, yeah, I never break my NDAs. Ever. Contrary to pop popular belief, I actually don't. <laughs> um, but I have done, I guess. And I'd do it again, damn it. Yeah, I'm blacklisted from Paradox, so I won't be able to get City Skylines too early. People are saying like, oh, can't wait. Well, anyway, I'll be playing it, but I just won't have it early. Unless someone there changes their mind. Uh, but yeah, from speculation about the performance issues, I think to me it just seems like my specific CPU. If anyone has an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, I'd be very curious to know how your game is running. Just because I think it's literally the spe my specific CPU that's the issue. Not even the brand. But yeah, switching Vulkan, DirectX, any of that, none of it matters. It's not graphics related. It's CPU related, whatever it is, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure of that. The only thing that improves frame rate is having less stuff going on in the world. So it seems CPU bound to me, not GPU bound. Alright, so there's all our Katerian machines. I guess we'll just put in the... I have to make sure I've got what I need now for the floor holes and stuff, so I'll try to do that kind of quickly. They're both feeding into the same thing, yeah. So we need pipes and then floor holes. Yeah, we got loads. That's the outputs. This is the input. Can't remember if it was right next to it or not. I just have to check the other side really quickly. I do, and I run around 100 FPS. Maxed out settings on um, update 8. On the new update. See you later, Tim. And thanks for being here. All right, looking good. And then we need floor holes doing the same thing. You had a similar, ah, uh, yes. Oh, interesting. Damn. And I really am confused what my issue is. 6650 XT, I don't even know what that is. A 6650 XT graphics card. What make is that? Kill a lizard dog? No, I'm good. <laughs> Um, you had a similar issue with Anna, but then the problem was a Windows update. That was true, yeah. I only knew that was a Windows update because there was no game update. And my FPS started getting worse. But then it did get better. Uh, possible with all the background processes going on. Yeah, in the save. I, I turned off everything else and just ran the game just to check. I turned off Discord and everything else that might be eating up some resources. And it still ran poorly. And like I said, my CPU and GPU utilization was really low. So it was like it, the game just wasn't using anything. Well, it wasn't super, super low. It was, it was 20% for my GPU. And it was like 18 for the CPU. And it was consistent. And then it would fill up to 11 gigabytes of RAM. And that was it. Wasn't really using any much more than that either. What am I missing for this? Aluminum sheets. What comes out of these machines? Oh, that feeds in. Sorry. Whoops. Controversial opinion. The lizard dog is actually a shrimp dog. That's funny. I've never tamed one in the game. I don't think I've killed one either. They're sort of just they're there. I killed a bird with a bomb once. I didn't mean to. 
Got in the way. I've definitely killed the big bean things, though. They're really annoying. <laughs> Alright, pipeline mark one. Noodle me. Wanna noodle it? Yeah. An AMD. That doesn't make sense. Satisfactory is more CPU intensive. Ryzen 7 laptops, 3070 Ti. Steam doesn't make it easy to go between 7 and 8. So I'm waiting for a while. I tried the initial 8 build. It was basically unplayable for me. Hmm. I think Steam makes it pretty easy. You just click a button. And it switches over, doesn't it? Oh, hang on. Gotta change music. Oh no, that's okay, actually. I just thought it wasn't Minecraft for a sec. Don't want to get demonetized. Autosave running in the background. Um, yeah, while it's doing that, I could actually show you again what mine looked like. This was it running on low. This is a video. So when it was running on lo everything low settings. Global illumination off. Anti-aliasing turned down, to all, I think, off. And it was at like 33 FPS. It says in the top right, 33 and it fluctuates between 28 and 33. And then I go into the settings and I turned everything on to ultra. Turned on everything. So click to apply. So we've just gone to from the absolute lowest settings to the highest settings possible and the frame rate is the exact same, 33. No difference. Looks way better though. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, then what else? Then we I showed people just up here. The other issue I'm getting is this. Do you see the occlusion culling? When a door opens, when I'm getting visibility on an object, the draw call is running. So that I get, you know the game has been told to render it for me. I'm catching that. You should never ever catch that. It's actually super rare to ever see a game do that. Every game does it. It's called occlusion culling. You only render what you see. But I'm actually catching it doing it. It's like it's on a delay. That's the only thing where I think that's kind of GP related, but everything else seems to be CPU related. And you can see as I pull out objects, it's like wiping what's in front of me. Or it's loading it in slower, slowly, I guess. It's not catching up to how fast I'm moving, I suppose. Um, but then I showed people, if I just load a new world, max graphics, we're silky smooth. Looks like a CGI trailer. It looks that good <laughs> or something. <laughs> so this is running at like 120 FPS. I think did I Yeah, I was trying to look at like the graphics on the machines and stuff. How they're lit. That's an old video, I think. Oh, this is me trying to test out the new vehicle physics. But the vehicle ran well, but obviously the frame rate was 22 FPS, 20 FPS. Felt like I was driving in slow motion or something. And then it would just like, have these big stutter periods as well, like right now. So yeah. I don't know. But like I said earlier, um, I did list my thing on the Satisfactory QA website. My specific issue. There we go. That's my issue. Post it again in the chat. I'm on the latest drivers. All drivers up to date. Windows up to date. Everything's up to date. BIOS might maybe not. That's the one thing I haven't checked. Um, but that's the um, yeah thing. So obviously no one else really seems to be having this. It's like low frame rate regardless of graphical options. Not stuttering. Although it is. I am stuttering. But this is a separate issue. 
Loads of people are saying that they're getting stuttering. I'm getting that too, but this is more a consistent per performance. Um, so yeah. Anyways. Uh, gonna watch some blacklisted City Skylines. Let's play Eco Solutions. Gotta have a, every all the titles that gotta be in caps, man. Uh, but yeah, see you later. Hey, we should do something soon. I've been meaning to message you. <laughs> Want to see if I can get Mitch to come out as well. Do something. Uh, right, so what do I have to do? Oh yeah, I still have to hook up these pipes. Sorry, I got distracted. Oh no, I can't squeeze through here. Goddamn, too fat. You know why I'm running over there? I'm running over there so I can grab a pipe rather than just clicking it from the menu. Right, so they're all hooked up. That's all good. Did I do the floor holes on the other side? I think I did. Yep, so that's all good. All right, so we just need then um, mergers in the middle. No, I didn't line these up together. Was I supposed to do that? I could still do that really quickly, so that way they all just feed nicely into one. Yeah, I should do that. Okay, so I'm going to have to remove those last five. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe worth it, though. It'll fit together much better. Alright, so we need the outputs to line up with each other, but to be offset, so... God damn, it's so hard to see. So I'll probably, um, can't wait to use that nudging. This will at least let me see what I'm trying to lock onto. All right, let's try that. So I can't latch onto the first one. I can latch onto this one. There we go. Yep. All right, two, three, four, five. And we are lined up. All right, good. Let's just do this backside <laughs> really quickly. And I'll catch my chat as I get distracted. <laughs> Four holes. All right. One, two, three, four, and five. Other floor holes. One. Alright, progress has been made. Okay, cool. So there's 15 refineries all in place, all with their stuff fucked up. We just need to give them a last little belt. But I was just to check really quickly. So they're going to be doing uh, Caterium. So it's 12 per minute. 12 times 15. 180. So we just need a belt of the Mark II belt, right? That can do this. Mark II belts can just connect these guys up. What branded model is your motherboard? I have no idea. Asus. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure it's MSI... It says when I boot up the computer. Uh, if you go to whatdarnplays.com slash spec, I think I list it there. So that's whatdarnplays.com slash spec, S-P-E-C. That's my full hardware setup. Um, the best way is, sorry, if I missed something, I think you have to restart when you switch to anti aliasing mode, don't you? Temporal super resolution seems to be causing issues, especially like RAM filling up, ra the RAM filling up issue. 
Uh, maybe, I, I don't know. Do you have to restock for that? I wouldn't have thought so. I didn't think any of the games make you restart for something like that, because it's a post-processing effect. I would be surprised if you have to restart for it. Beer, got a promotion Friday, so... Oh, hey, congrats. By the way, sorry, I only saw that now. You're probably gone, but congrats. Just realized the trick of putting all my water up on towers on the roof and flowing it through the factory saved me so much in pumps. Yeah, that's cool. I don't like to do that kind of stuff. To me, that's kind of like an exploit. You can do whatever you want, but I, I don't like to exploit in games. There's two reasons for it. One, it just... I don't know. I don't like breaking the design of the game. I'm surprised people really enjoy doing that. But two, if they ever update the game to, quote, fix an exploit, which I don't think they are going to, then it wouldn't work anymore. So I like to just play it safe, stay within the limits of what they actually intended the design to be, and that way I never have to worry about anything. Um, and also I feel like you don't have to do weird stuff to make things look okay. Anyway, it's all good, though. Everyone could do whatever they want, but I just don't want to do that. But I've known about it for a while. The water tower method is quite interesting. Mark 2 isn't 120, is it? Oh, did I say that? Oh, you're right. Good call. Yep. Need Mark 3. Thanks for catching me on that. Alright. Uh, I'll just leave that one there. Okay, good. How are water towers an exploit? They literally use them in the real world. Oh, I'm thinking of, um, isn't there, I'm, I'm thinking of, this video's on like how to get your water. Basically, you, you can avoid having to use pumps if you bring everything up into a centralized tower and then it flows down. Right? But that's not how it works in real life, from what I understand. How could you possibly cut down on... You have to pump the water up there first. How does that... Because you're, you're getting free height from it, from what I understand from videos I've seen. I could be wrong, but from what I'm re referencing is... I've definitely seen videos where it's like... You stack fluid buffers on top of each other. Like this, you have a bunch of these, and you stack them up and up and up, and that way you don't need pumps or something because they just keep flowing between each other. Something like that. I, I don't know because I haven't done it, but I thought that's what it was. I thought the whole point was that you have to, you can avoid using pumps, but you still need to pump up anyway. So well, then what's the point of the tower? You pump it all up to the top with one pump. Oh okay, well, let me stop you there. That doesn't, so Spiri says, you pump it all up to the top with one pump and then distribute it down with gravity. Okay. One sec. Breaking out paint. So let's say I have a body of water here. Um, well, actually, let's say I've got a pipe going along and that's going to be 600. Right? 600 is in my pipe. And then I need it to go to, I don't know, uh, Whatever, just some machines somewhere. It needs to go there. Why would you pump it up? So you're pumping 600 up into this big tower thing, and then you're just sending it down to distribute it to other places. But it's still 600. How are you saving on pumps or pipes if you're... I don't really get it. Like, I don't, I'm not really too sure. Oh, this is a terrible diagram, obviously, but... You're limited by how much is traveling in the pipe. So if you're sending 600 up, then you're only ever pumping, you pump, put one pump on it to pump 600. Yeah, the 600 goes up there. And then like, how does this help anything? Why not just pump 600 into the thing directly? What does this do? <laughs> you know, I thought the whole point of this was that people were saying like, oh, no, 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 you can use this and only have one pump somehow. But the way I read it, you still... Not saving on pumps, but just centralizing. Well, that's totally fine. That's different than what I've seen. I can't really describe what I've seen because it's, it's, I, 
I hadn't done it, but it's something to do with you stack fluid buffers on top of each other. And then the whole point is you save on pumps. That's what I heard. And it's like, oh, you don't need like you only need one pump versus needing like 10 or something because you can trick the game effectively. Um, you can raise all the fluid anywhere in the system up to the highest point. But if you're raising, my whole thing is you can only ever raise 600 for one pump, right? No matter what. So I don't know how you're saving on pumps. Yeah, you're still limited by that first pipe. You can only ever have one pump for 600 fuel, uh, like whatever, liquid. So I could be confused, but I thought the way people were describing it is like, let's say they're like, you can do 1800 liquid in a big water tower and only have one pump because we're gaming it. But you wouldn't be able to do that normally because you'd have to pump the 600, 600, and 600 with three pumps. But from what I've heard is if you mess with the buffers in a certain way, you can trick the game into not needing the pumps for the extra volume. That's what I've heard. So I could be wrong. I thought I'm waving my hands around describing it in front of myself so you can't see. <laughs> you spread the 600 to all the pipe to get pressure in them. There's no pressure in this game though. So I, I don't know. It works in real life because when you pump water up to the top and then switch the pump off. Yes, that's different. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That makes sense. <laughs> and also pressure is a thing in real life, which it isn't in this game. You can't increase or decrease pressure by adding gravity or volume and, and things like that to a pipe in this game. But anyway, I could be wrong. Maybe if I'm sure I am, whatever you guys are talking about, but if you're just if you're just pumping something up to a centralized location, that's fine. I've got no problem with that. But I thought you're doing the quote exploit. I'm sure someone like Total Eclipse or if it's not him, it's Kibitz has done a video on literally titling it like exploiting the pumping system. But maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, so right, we've got our 15 extra Caterium. What's the other refineries? You need 10 other refineries for copper ore. They can be built on their own. They don't need to be like copied from any other thing. Yeah, so we need 8 to 14. We have 8 currently at the back. But I need 6 more. Now, I could extend this out, actually, thinking about it. Uh, maybe not, actually. Maybe. We've got some room out there. I guess, is there any... I, I, I left this free initially thinking, like, maybe I could bring a railway around here. But it doesn't seem like I'd ever be able to do that anyway. So why not just build all the way up to the edge? Why not? Um, so let me just see what that would look like. We'd need to put in six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we could build out here. Let's see, why not? All right, so that's what we'll do then. Build out here. Okay. I'll leave that. I'm giving it a video on this. I think it has to do with head lift. As, less, as long as the tower is higher than where the fluid is being delivered, you don't need pumps to lift the fluid. Yes, because you get the first 10 for free. That's what it is. You got it. You get the first 10 head lift for free. Because it comes out of the machine that way. And then you can like combine it with different pipes and put it into fluid buffers. And as long as it's only 10 meters above each other, it just goes up and up and up and up. And then you can filter it down, distribute it without using pumps at all. That's... I think the the gimmick or whatever the exploit yeah is it worth it to save on what four megawatts of power per pump I would say no 
but some people would tell you, yes, you want to be super efficient in all walks of life, then I guess so. It's four megawatts. The other one is a bit bigger though, right? It's eight. Eight megawatts of power. Breaking the bank there. But, uh, you know, if you're dealing with lots of liquid, I suppose you could end up having like 800 pumps. <laughs> or 800 megawatts, sorry. If you had like 100 pumps or something. So, you know. No, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth exploiting the game for, personally. But, you know, I don't, like I said, I, I don't mind if other people do it. It just wouldn't be something I would do. But building a water tower to distribute stuff, that using the normal mechanics of the game, yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, cool. Extend this area out, and then we just need to add these ones on. So we'll just cut this away. So we're going from 8 to 14. Someone said when I initially named these, I was like, oh, I'm going to number them not based on what they do. I'm just going to number them for the number in the factory. And they said, well, if you ever need to add any more on, all your numbers are going to be off then. I was like, that's never going to happen. And here I am now. Never going to happen. Why would I be redoing things? Alright, that's 10. Need to do four more, but I'm out of motors, so I have to go make another run for them. I'll just go on foot. It's not that far. And in fact, if we go up to the top here, we could probably just glide over. Yeah, that's another thing that people have said to do. I've heard that before, that you can package liquids, use a belt lift to lift it up high, and then use a packager to unpack them. But I think the, the cost of the packager for power would outdo the, ne the need, right? It's 10 megawatts of power for a packager. So it depends. If you're going higher than the, you know, two pumps, then yeah, one packager would make sense. But then you're also limiting how much goes in and out of that, right? Because you can only do a certain amount per minute. But yeah, that's an interesting thing to kind of do as well. Like if you're going high enough at a certain point, that will make sense to do that. <laughs> Well, I say makes sense. It, it doesn't make sense. It just... <laughs> it makes sense to some people. <laughs> There's a couple of our oil nodes right there. Efficiency must be 100%. Yeah, I, ca I can't really knock people who feel that way, though, you know, because... At the end of the day, it's a game about building factories and monitoring efficiency, really. So if people want to take that to the extreme and go like, well, what's the most efficient way to do it? Can't really fault them for, for trying to figure that stuff out, you know? But I like to get immersed in games and stuff. And when you start like messing with, you know, just exploiting things, I, I lose interest. It's just me. But I can see why people do that. It's a shame though, it's actually really interesting, I even clipped it when recently Jace from Coffee Stain said people will create exploits where they ruin their own fun. Um, and I thought that was a really well said thing. He said it better than that, but he, he said it much more coherently than that. Something like, players will find a way to exploit away their own fun, something like that. And I'm like, that is so true. Where, you know, I, I'm friends with Legend of Total War, he plays obviously Total War games. And in Warhammer Total War, you can get a legendary lord, right? A single entity lord. Let's say that this is a wall of a city. You've got your single entity lord just running here. And if you run back and forth in front of the wall, the enemy will be firing arrows on you. But because you're just a single lord and you're running back and forth, they never hit you. They hit where you were, right? Because they fire their arrows and by the time it takes to get there, you've already run away. And he'll do that, run back and forth until they run out of ammo. And he'll do that for the first 10, 15 minutes of a battle. And that way they've got no ammo. And once they run out, he'll then run up and attack. And it's like, that is an interesting little exploit for the AI, right? They can't work out that they shouldn't be firing on something they can't hit. And they'll just drain all their ammo. But you, in my opinion, he doesn't seem to have that problem. But in my opinion, you are exploiting away your own fun. I, would I know about that and I would never do it because that's so boring. <laughs> But it's interesting, and it's funny to see that he actually genuinely does do it, and he just doesn't seem to care about, like, I guess, what is fun. He only cares about efficiency and what would get him the win. What is the best 
the path of least resistance. You know, how can I lose as little troops as possible? And how can I win? Back nearly eight years ago, we did a campaign together in Rome 2, Total War Rome 2. And it was a head to head. And he had. I should just take more with me because I'm going to need them. He had a unit called, I think, Namidian Javelin Men, right? So these are horseback javelin men. They're riding a horse and they throw javelins at you. We went to a game together, into a battle. He fields a bunch of these guys that throw javelins and run away. And what he does is he runs up to my front line, throws all his javelins. Really annoying, but I'm like, yeah, he's going to run out of ammo, so whatever. This is just what we have to deal with. We'll, we'll try to fend him off whatever way we can with slingers, whatever. Maybe get a couple of kills, but mostly he's just throwing all his stuff. He throws all his stuff, gets quite a few kills on me. You know, probably does about 10-15% kills to my whole army. And then what does he do after he runs out of ammo? He withdraws from battle. So that if we fight again, he's got full ammo. And I don't have any way to heal my guys or replenish my troops. And he's like, yeah, I'll just keep doing that. So I was just like, well, I'm not. I'm just not going to play then, because that's just ridiculous. Because <laughs> we're ultimately doing this for the enjoyment of others. And if you're going to come into a battle where I can't do anything, waste ammo, and then run away, I'm like, well, just forget it then. I'm not going to sit there for 30 hours doing that. It's ridiculous. But it was funny. It was funny once. I was just like, I'm not going to go sit through that anymore. So he's just a, you know, he's of a different breed, that guy. Whereas when me and Jackie played, we did, we actually gave rules to each other where we try to make it more realistic and immersive for each other, you know? It's like, don't go too close to the edge of the map because it's unrealistic to say that I can't flank you because there's an invisible border there, you know? We'd be gentleman's agreement not to do silly things like that, but that's uh, that's legend for you, man. Um, anyway, so we need four more refineries down this way. can do at least three more. I probably should have gotten other things. I really should have queued up more in the uh, thing, but we don't have to run back just yet. We'll put down the three and start lining them up. One. Yeah, I'm out of steel pipes. That's alright. Okay, so. What comes out of here? It's copper ingots. 37.5 per minute. 37.5 times what's going to be 14 now. 525. So one belt can still handle all of it. So that's not a big problem then. Use magic terms. He's a spike. You're a Johnny. I don't know the terms, but it just sounded funny either way. Ah, joke time. I used to be able to play the piano by ear. But now I have to use my hands. That's a classic dad joke. Thank you for that. <laughs> Scru scruffy. Some people can't bear the thought of losing. Well, I think he just loves the thought of winning. <laughs> it's not about losing. It's actually just about like saying, like, I literally won a battle without losing a single man, you know? Um, but the interesting thing with Legend is he doesn't do that well in multiplayer. Not to call him out or anything. He, he's just really good at cheesing and breaking AI. That's his whole shtick. Primarily. Um, I haven't forgot to upgrade this belt. I'll do it later. We still need to add on one more machine. So that's going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you still need two more. Gladly, I, I'm happy that I can still fit them here, though. And the problem is they need, they need to go into these, don't they? To make cheating. Oh, I just realized. I could just overclock them. That could work. So we might do that with this row, because I don't really have a place for that row to go. Like, for another row. Unless I did it right. I mean, there is actually a four-lane walkway here. Maybe I could squeeze them in. Yeah. I could squeeze them in. Actually, that's not bad. All right. All right, so let me actually plan out how many of those I need. So we need... 10 more of these ones. Alright, so I can actually key this up then. So we need 10 and then at least 2. Let's just increase it a bit more. So more steel pipes, more encased beams, and copper sheets. 
think I've got all this in this factory, just in my other storage area. Steel pipes. Didn't have any of that there. Some people are just artists with exploits through, though. Has anyone heard of Spiffing Bread? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's crazy. I mean, he exploits real life, which is interesting. He just recently tweeted that he got car insurance where they pay him. In real life. That he set it, obviously, on a website or something. He somehow gamed it and got himself into negative payments where they'll technically should be paying him. Now, I'm sure that that would be stopped. But it's just interesting to see how he is breaking things like that. So it's cool. I mean, he's got a talent for it. Because not only does he... I mean, I don't know how he does it for so many games so quickly. But I think also now he has, like, people help him figure these things out. But still, it's still really impressive, like, how he does it. I like what Spiffing Brit does. Because even though I would never... I'm just not into game exploits. And I'm surprised that he has as big an audience as he does. But it is interesting to see how you can break a game. But once I've seen it once, then I'm, like, kind of over it. So that's my issue with Legend, really. Um, I love Legend, friend of mine, but I wouldn't really... After I've seen someone do the trick with the wall once, then I'm like, that's interesting. But like, okay, what's the next trick, you know? But he'll do it over and over again, do full playthroughs that way, and people like to watch that kind of stuff, and that's cool. But Spiffing Brit's interesting because at least he goes game by game. You know, it's like, oh, wow, you are you can figure out how to break Civ, City Skylines, or whatever, 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 and keep going. That's kind of cool. Hey, Paul B. Did you try making a new save to see if your graphics issues are affected by how many items, placement, etc. started a new save on Max and it ran bad? Yeah, I started a new world. Uh, oh, I didn't realize I had display capture on the whole time. But I can show you. I've showed this a few times. But this is the like a brand new world, a new save. It runs great. And as I mentioned when I posted the link to my issue on the website, I said that the more complex my save gets, the worse the frame rate. So the frame rate here is 120. It's a blank world. I've just got the first thing coming into it. All settings maxed out. Um, if I load a save from, say, episode 30, I've got about 60 FPS. If I load a save from episode 60, which is where we're roughly at now, getting 20 FPS. So obviously the more stuff I'm adding in, things are getting worse. However, I would say that on the update 7, I've max settings. By the way, the settings don't make a difference. So I'll stop saying max settings because it doesn't make a difference. Low settings, ultra settings, global illumination or not, doesn't make a difference. It's the same frame rate. So either way, this update is tanking the logic performance of the game. For me, you know, I don't know, I five or five times over or something like that, fivefold. So... You know, either way, it's not uh, solvable by going like, oh, can you start a new save? It's like, yeah, I can. But I I, I would never play this game again if it's not going to work in the new update. <laughs> that would just be the reality of it. Because this looks like a big build. It's empty. There's nothing in there. So it's purely based on all the other factors I've got. Now, the most complicated two factors I have are probably fused frames, crystal oscillators, and maybe the aluminum. Everything else is baby's first factory in comparison to what you see other YouTubers doing. And they've got it with, like, you know, Kibitz has insane factories on his world. And his world is running fine. Um, so, yeah. So, obviously, there's just some issue. I'm just waiting. I'm sure at some point they'll optimize it. I do... The only thing I would like is some acknowledgement of my problem. The only thing is that it seems to be obscure. People are having stuttering issues, but no one's having just consistent bad FPS. And I haven't seen anyone say, like, well, my world was running well, and now it's not, regardless of setting. That's a little worrying that I seem to be one of the few people saying that. I don't, I don't really see anyone else saying that. So that's, a, that's a little concerning. Ah, oh, crap. Didn't bring enough stuff. Let's get some of this out of the way. Got everything I need now. Okay. Didn't plan this very well. I should have had all the materials ready to go from the beginning. Anyway, I always want to be the best at a game because I figured it out better than anyone else. Not because I found a broken piece of code and abused it over and over. That's fun, but that's not winning. Yeah, Legend would say, what's the difference? <laughs> Especially when these exploits don't get patched. He says, like, well... If it's not going to get fixed, then it's a legit strategy, you know? But it's... That's in the eye of the beholder, I suppose. Are you sure this isn't just your game annihilating... 
aura. Your game annihilating aura. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Nothing ever works for me. It's kind of a... Especially when it comes to PC gaming. I bought a Steam Deck recently. Steam Deck didn't work. Had to be... Uh, it did work, but then I tried playing Octopath Traveler and it just kept crashing. They said, well, it's just your Steam Deck. Or no, they said it's just the game. Eventually, I finally got them to take the Steam Deck back and I got a new one and it worked. So it wasn't just the Steam Deck, was it? Or it wasn't just the game, I mean. So I, I do seem to have very unfortunate luck with hardware. When I first got this PC, it didn't work for the first like three or four months. I had to be sent back six times. <laughs> six times until it worked. I've had it for a year now though. It's had no issues since it got fixed. You know what's never broken though? My PlayStation 5. Sony would, wouldn't do me dirty like that. Anyway, sounding more and more like a BIOS update. Yeah, I'll try that afterwards. I'll try that tonight. I'm in the same boat. That's good to hear. Well, that's obviously not good to hear, but it's good to hear I'm not alone. You say the file are okay? I'm sure they'll fix it. Yeah, so I've got all my saves here. Actually, I deleted a bunch of them, but I have them backed up. But if I go back through the episodes and I, you know, the earlier and earlier I go, the less the frame rate is an issue. But my argument is that, like, I don't think my world is really that complex. Really. So I, I don't know if it's an object thing, maybe there's too many objects, or if it's a, there's too many machines doing things. I don't know. I could maybe see the object thing, because it's like, well, I do try to build nicely. And there's like all these, you know, think of how many objects just one of these has. Loads. Absolutely loads of components. So, it could be that. Some weird slowdown based on the amount of objects, but there should be no reason that the game is processing the amount of objects in real time. The only thing that's processing in real time is doing the math behind the scenes for all the things you're making. So that makes me think it's some CPU bound problem. We have the same spec RTX 3090, AMD Ryzen 9 590, 5950X, 32 gigs of RAM. I can't remember what type of RAM I have. And the game is running on an SSD. Uh, a WD SN850, I think. Alrighty. That should be all of these guys. We'll just hook them all up and make sure their belt's the appropriate speed. It was 525. Do we need a max belt? So I need Alclad aluminum sheets. Okay. Tell you what, this to-do list is doing nothing for me right now. So we'll just get rid of this and say... Get Alclad. <laughs> I'll get that in a bit. So I don't, just don't forget. I'll say um, get Alclad for copper. Anyway, uh, design keepers have that issue. He has way more objects. Are my messages does not appear on the chat for others? I can see your messages. Did you see the new Paradise game? This new Star Trek game is based on the Stellaris engine. Yeah, I'm not interested in Star Trek, i got to be honest. I thought it was Stellaris once they announced it. I was like, oh my god, they're going to do Stellaris 2, finally. But, uh, nope. Yeah, I'm not really interested in... I mean, there's Star Trek mods for Stellaris. So, I, I don't know. Not to poo-poo it. I'm sure if you like Star Trek, then it's probably a bit more interesting to you, but I kind of wish... Who's doing it, by the way? Because is it a Paradox Studios game, or is it just... Um... Are they publishing it, you know? But yeah, sorry, I just, I don't read all my chat all the time. I try to, but I get very distracted and it's, it's kind of, it's, believe it or not, it's actually hard to read while you're trying to focus on numbers and uh, build and keep the progress of the thing flowing, you know, that's all. So if I, if I miss anything, just, just ask it again. I don't mind. Or drop it in a super chat and then I'll definitely see it. seeing iron plates now as well. God damn, I got no materials. Or I have an inventory full of all the wrong stuff, I guess. 
At least we have all the piping. All right, so that's all hooked up. We just need then, so I'll say iron plates as well. That's Alclad to send this stuff out. And then they get used floor holes to take the copper ore in. And this can just extend along, and there's plenty of room for more water extractors here, so no issue. Also, this is only a Mark II belt, so obviously capacity is no problem for adding much more. In fact, this copper comes from, I want to say, a bridge that's quite far away. From just one deposit, and I think it's an impure node. Not sure how much we'll actually need, but I think it comes from over there, doesn't it? Yeah, it flows along there, you can see it. <laughs> little triangles. Uh, there is a BIOS update for your motherboard on MSI's website. Do you know when it was? Because I did update the BIOS not that long ago. I mean, I'll check all this, like I said, after the stream. Uh, or probably tonight. I have some recording to do after this. But, um, yeah, tonight I'll have a look and see if I can do an update. Because I, I can't remember what it was. Was something else? Oh, it was Anno. That's what it was. Anno wasn't running very well. And people said, do a BIOS update. I'm so hesitant to do anything like that because sometimes, man, I do an update and then suddenly I'm out of a job for a week because something broke, you know? Last last week. Do you think I need the latest BIOS update to run? How annoying is that, though? <laughs> like, if it only released last week, is it really, like, that important? But, uh, okay. I'll try to get it, though. Hopefully everything just works smoother if I do. I have to go get these materials. I need to find... I'll just put down a little container again. Or go up to my previous container. To drop off the stuff that I'm not using. Because I keep filling up my inventory with crap I don't need. Whoa. I didn't really mean to do that. Can I go back? No. Happened to me with Cyberpunk. Interesting. Cyberpunk runs really great for me. Always has. I only ever played it a year after it came out, though. Right, so. Let's get rid of some of the stuff we don't need. So, I don't need silica. Concrete I don't need right now. put down these next 12 refiners and then uh, we'll hook them up and then that'll be kind of it for this initial area so I think I can leave a bridge like this let's see so 22.5 copper sheets there's 14 machines so 22.5 times 14 yeah we can add on more there's currently, they're running at 13.33 speed. We need to get them up to 23.3. Okay. So it basically just needs 10 more. And they can connect into the same. My whole point was that they can connect into the same thing. So that's times 14. I think so anyway. 23. Yeah. They can all fit on one belt. Alright, so we need 10 more of these, I think. Maybe 11, actually. I'll just double check that in a sec. Getting a little close to my tower, though. I suppose instead of underclocking one, we can overclock one if we're tight on space, which I kind of am. Let me just count that up. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 blah. That's 11. Uh, 
And that was definitely 14. So, uh, it's 25. Only need 24. Okay. Alright, cool. Um, sorry. Finally caught you online. Always seem to miss out. No worries. Yeah, I'll be here for another little while. How much time? It's been two hours. I'll be here for another hour. Got early access to Forever Skies. Know what I'll be doing after the stream. Nice. Did you try the 8? Yes, I did. Yeah, we've talked quite a bit about it. It doesn't run well for me. It runs really bad, actually, and we're trying to figure out why. But, um, the best, uh, idea at the moment is to maybe try a BIOS update. And maybe that'll help, but other than that, it does not run for me right now, so I've had to leave it. We need iron plates, and we can link all this up together. And then we have to hook these up as well. I've got the copper flooring thing, I think, already, the floor holes. No, so this needs iron plates as well. Alright, we have to make a run for iron plates then. Everything there is running smooth. Good. Where's our vehicle? We'll drive over this time. You got early access to it. Does that mean, like, as part of... Doesn't the Steam Next Fest start today? I really wanted to do a, um, a video every day covering a different demo from the Steam Next Fest, but I just don't think of the time. <laughs> so busy with uh, City Skylines and Satisfactory and Anno. Three games that eat a lot of time. Especially if you want to show any progress being made, you know? Now, fix the optimizations. No point going into all that yet. Yeah. Yeah, I have no doubt they will. I just, the only, my little fear is just that little asterisk that it's like, oh, it's, I seem to be in a rare category for it. You know, they might not fix my particular optimization issue for a long time. Potentially ever. Because if I'm like, only, there's only one other upvote on the QA side for it. You know? So it's just like, ah, pretty buried down there. And then they're going on holiday soon, but oh well. Hopefully they'll get everything back to where it was beforehand. It should run better, not worse, really. Especially if I run it on low settings. Uh, when are you planning on upgrading to nuclear power? Uh, so after this build, this is supercomputers, then I'm doing a battery factory, and then I'll be doing nuclear power. That's the plan anyway. Like I am out of... Oh, no, I'm not. All right, just noticed something. Let's off. Music. My music is over. All right. Have I played Cliff Empire? Yeah, I actually reviewed it back in the day. I really liked it. Thought it was a very cool game. Micro city builder and logistics game. Cliff Empire Republic of Play. You can see my video, probably. Do I need anything else here while I'm here? What else would I need? Oh, Alclad I did need. Don't know if that's necessarily enough though, just two batches. Just burn some fuel. I probably won't need that. Alright. I was oh you're a background Kickstarter, nice. Been watching your streams and let's plays for quite a while now. Um the thought about your bills just being okay. Whoops. It's crazy. You make some amazing Hey, thank you. Appreciate that. I guess it's like a kind of grass is always greener type thing. It's like I look at some of the other YouTubers and I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> how do they do it? But thank you. I'll check it out. I wanted to do a new playthrough. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, you wanted to do a new playthrough? Oh, you mean, I, have you ever played it before at all? 
I think it's it's quite good, but it, it is kind of one of those games where it's like... I don't know if it offers enough unique to make it relevant on its own compared to anything else. But if you're just desperate to kind of play another type of logistics or city builder type game, then it's a good one to go with. A great game for like Steam Deck, I think, as well, because it's on a very small scale. And you can do little bits at a time rather than have to spend hours and hours doing something, you know? But it is good. I'd be very proud of it if I made it. But it's kind of like, oh, in this marketplace, how do you compete with a game like that when you've got something like an Anno or, you know? Because even like you could be like, oh, I could play like an older Anno game. All right, let's do some of our odd jobs first. Got to put down that Alclad in the copper area. Then we can build out the rest of the refineries that I'm missing. Oh, no, I'm not missing any. Actually, it's all just belt work now. Yeah, cool. Space-wise, this seems to be working out actually kind of nicely. Better than I initially thought, so that's good. These are going to be doing copper. Copy that. Hey, Etheric Bard, appreciate the uh, super chat. Thank you. And they say, just shouting out the great content. Videos are easy to watch. Makes the game look easy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, appreciate super chats. They are extremely appreciated and helpful. And they pretty much directly go into me deciding if I want to do more streams. That and channel memberships, of course. Um, okay. Alright, let's hook these up. So for the, anyone who's just joining, this is a crystal oscillator factory doing 60 crystal oscillators per minute. And we're upgrading it so we can do 105. I needed 80 for a supercomputer factory I'm building at the moment. And because of that, it just, yeah, this seemed like a good one to do on a stream. Because it's like, oh, we're going into an older factory and just updating it a bit. Rather than on its full, its own video. I've noticed that this is slightly over to one side. Should we, am I bothered to move this over? Yes, I think I am. <laughs> it's easy enough because none of the things are in yet. If I just hold down Alt gear, we can just select just these ones. Make sure I haven't selected any that were behind there. Alright. Bonk. Just left a little crate behind. I can't tell if it's even or not. If only I had some sort of nudging mechanic. Alright, let's try that one. No, I think it needs to come over by one. Okay. Yeah, okay, got it. Mine, my, sorry, mine looked like a child made them with crayons, that's funny. At the end of the day, making them look good is all just... kind of an option, you know, an optional thing. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. As long as they function, <laughs> that's all that matters. As long as you're making the goods. Alright, we can hook these up now. The process begins anew. That was relatively smooth, actually. Okay, good. Alright, then we have to just do all the floor holes and stuff at the back. I think that needs to come out by one. Not sure. Let's just see if they squeeze in. Oh no, it's okay.
Um, I really love all your content. Have you ever done Surviving Mars? I know it's kind of old now, but it seems up your alley. I've played it. I reviewed it back when I was doing reviews on YouTube. So pretty much every strategy game you can think of that came out in the last five years. Barring the last year. Um, I did videos on. So yeah, I did. Uh, I, I liked Surviving Mars. I think I gave it a... When it first came out, it was a little bare, I would say. A little bit um, lacking on content. But with the Green Cities DLC and a few other patches, then it became much better. Um, but yeah, I really like it, but it wouldn't be something I'd cover now, just again, because it is a little bit too old. I know I just did City Skylines, but it's because it has a sequel. If Surviving Mars gets a sequel, then we could revisit it. Sorry for the noise, if you could hear that. It's my doorbell. My helper is going to answer it. Man, you know what? If you were here two hours ago, we were talking about McDonald's and KFC. Still thinking about it. Still thinking about it. Get that KFC, get the gravy. Oh. Oh my god. Alright, we are lined up and hooked up on that side. We're making progress, albeit a little slowly, but these machines are getting into position. These ones are almost hooked up. This is what we need the Alclad for. So, luckily we can do that now. So because we've just improved this area, this is going to have to be chopped away for a sec. That loops around and goes into all of these machines. Interesting. It's like watching someone else who designed this, you know? I can't really remember doing it. <laughs> like, oh, that's interesting to see what they were thinking. They being me in the past. All right, we're hooked up. So let me just catch what I just missed on chat. Uh, so, I really love all I read that already. Uh, it's the reason I've stuck with them. Realistic builds for us mere humans to play along with and watch for inspiration. You inspired me to play Anno. Nice. Glad to hear it, Matt. I love your planned out builds. Your scope is just astounding. Or sorry, this scope is ast astounding. But whenever you do a Frankenstein build, adding, changing, an existing factor, your creativity comes alive. <laughs> That's cool. There's Surviving the Aftermath from the same devs, and it's not that old. Yeah, that's a good game. Well, actually, oh, sorry, I don't know about Surviving the Aftermath, but a good one that I've definitely played, I haven't played that one, it could be good, is um, Endzone, A World Apart. I was actually sponsored for it once, but I really liked the game. I did more videos on it than I was required, as per the sponsorship, if that makes sense. Really liked it. So I, I'd genuinely recommend that one, uh, Endzone, A World Apart. I think it's a really good mix of sort of logistics, and it's, it's basically banished, but post-apocalyptic. It's more like a banished game than anything. You're managing people's jobs and the hierarchy of priority of where they work and stuff and what they do. Really good. Um, and then there's an element of like kind, like not necessarily logistics, although there is a little bit. You're refining like scrap into plastics, electronics, and clothing and stuff and then you have to break that down into like a texture mill and other different things like that. So it's pretty cool. But there is... Um, finite resources you kind of have to keep moving expanding and get yourself upgraded on the tech tree before basically bad things end up happening at least you have a video to go back and reference the build that's true yeah i could actually see what i was saying about this build when building it it's a shame that i deleted the blueprint though that would have been nice to just re-blueprint these because they don't have their signs on them now or their color i'll have to redo the colors at some point anyway so they're all in position they're not powered just yet but that's okay we don't need to power things just yet this is flowing that direction. Okay, so that's all hooked up. So this, just to go from top to bottom, this is copper ore going into these machines, which are now doing... That, that produces copper ingots. This produces copper sheets. And then I'm making another row of them here, which are doing copper sheets. So I suppose what I need to do is feed this copper ore from down below as well. All right, so let's start working out the rates that we need to figure out downstairs. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 machines here. Just 10. Our total is now 23.3. So the one that was under or overclocked, I assume, is at the very end. 
is going to remain the same. We're just adding ten, an even 10 machines, which is, I don't know how that's working out so nicely, but it is. So that's, that's all good. All right. If we go downstairs then, whoop. Ah, yes. We have foundation one meter, which means I can't see my floor holes. They need to be foundation two meters. That's annoying. <laughs> I'll have to do, redo that in a sec. And see where we're supposed to bring this stuff down. And then we have to put in new water extractors. All right, let's get to work. Let's not shy away from the challenge. So that's where it's going to have to be. All right, so to get rid of all this. Take it back. I really should have just blueprinted this now, thinking about it, because I forgot how painful it can be doing all this again. And I've subjected you to it. I'm sorry. This would all be... This is the stuff that happens in episodes that you never see when I realized... 20 machines deep that certain things have to be redone. At least their positioning's okay. Yeah, the problem is that it only um, detects what you're putting a floor hole on. So it says, hey, you put this on a 1 meter foundation, so I'm only going to go 1 meter deep. But you have to put it on a 2 meter foundation, then remove the 2 meter foundation, then rebuild it. Alright, just wait for the autosave. I know you feel I had to reset my computer and all my blueprints got wiped. Oof, that is... Yeah, that's rough. I should... That's a great point. I should really back up my blueprints. I hear you since I kind of do what you do. Hopefully it gets spotted. <laughs> Calling Rosie by helper. Oh, excuse me. I'm surprised you haven't done a Minecraft create mod series. Don't tempt me. I did tease it before. I showed what Minecraft looks like on my PC. It looks so good. <laughs> I don't know. Minecraft's a weird one. It's such a personal... A nostalgic experience for me. It would be very strange doing like a let's play on it, I think. Because a lot of the time I like to just walk around. <laughs> I just explore and stuff. And I've, I've never built anything crazy in Minecraft. Back in the day when Minecraft was like, we're talking 2010, I used to play the Tech It mod. And it's the first time I ever played an automation game. I was saying in videos, I was like, Minecraft is the reason Factorio exists and Satisfactory and all these refinement games. And people were like, uh, Factorio is way before that. And then I looked up, the developers of Factorio said like they were inspired by Minecraft's factory mods. I was right. Felt good to be right about something, but they weren't the first game to ever do crafting, but on the scale they did. And the mods that invented like automating that crafting process so that you didn't have to do it by hand anymore. I think is where factory games and automation games came from. But um, the Tech It mod was so cool because you had, they had pipes. They had like these, instead of belts, you'd have a clear glass tube pipe. And it was unlike anything you'd seen in Minecraft. It kind of looked like glass in Minecraft, but a rectangle rather than a square. And uh, you'd see your objects floating along, going into their machines and stuff. And it was so cool. And then you'd even have automated diggers, excavators. So you'd plot out an area on the ground and you're like okay this is a 32 by 32 plot and it would just dig down forever um and you'd have to power it oh my god so good i don't know what happened to those mods i don't know where they are if you can play them anymore but they were so good because i was like i was trying to find automation mods for minecraft not that long ago and i found um something something engineering it was called immersive engineering and that seems good but i didn't see anything like excavators and all that stuff but it was still fun to play around with. I just kind of wish they brought back Tech It. But maybe it's just moved on since then. I don't, I don't know. Alright. So these should go down to the correct height down below. I'll just double check that before I build any more onto it. Damn, I keep doing that. Mechanism made me get into automation game. Love making farms with that. Oh man, I used to sit on RuneScape just hammering away at a mine as well. 
All right, there we go. We can actually see our stuff now. So it is clear of that area. I was a bit worried it wouldn't be. So this copper train that goes this way is going to have to divide up into these ones. And we need to count up how much that's going to be. A little close to the extractors, I guess, but it should, should be okay. So let's see how much all these machines are going to require then. There's ten of them. Oh my god. Come on. Things are sucking me in. Hate hypertubes. We're only in here because you guys begged for it. I'll take the stairs. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Alright, so. What do we got? Sheet. Steamed sheets. 22.5. So it's 220. But how much? Oh, it needs ingots. Oh yeah, what am I saying? That doesn't need... Oh yeah, that's great actually. We don't need to feed it more ore. The only ones that need more ore are the ones that go down the line down there. So how much ore do you guys need? So we're going 15 times 14. There's 14 of these machines now. There was 8. So 210. So 210 copper ore. That's all we need. That's easy. Alright, we're going to run out to the extractor. We'll overclock it to 210. And then we'll hook up whatever water is needed and just get that running, that section running already. Before we pile over to the next one. Uh, yeah, the hypertube revenge. Ugh. Yeah, it's only doing 120. Please tell me you can do 210. Good. So for 210, we need a belt 3, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is... Yeah, this is going to be awkward, actually. I don't even think I can get in there. This is why I say I always like to have my stuff accessible. Belts accessible and stuff. N very rarely do I ever build it in the ground or something like that. Okay, I think that's it. Yep, it's updated to Mark 3. As long as it's updated to Mark 3, then we're good. Alright, we can just actually float along here and just update this belt as we go. So Mark 3. That is weird that it goes down and under and then up. I'm sure I did it for a reason. Oh, I used to do it on the bottom and the top. Did I do that in the other place? Just want to make sure I did. I think it said Mark III already. Top lift wasn't upgraded. Yeah, I don't think I clicked upgrade, but I think it said Mark III already. So maybe I accidentally made it Mark III beforehand, you know? Don't think I clicked upgrade, but I think it already was. Yeah, it's, it is a Mark III. I think it's because... Oh, I know why. It's not going into a floor hole. It looks like it is. <laughs> That's why it doesn't need a separate upgrade. It's the one continuous thing. That's why. Alright. Oh, my poor factory. I've destroyed it. It used to look so nice. Alright. We'll just update this all the way over, and then that's our copper now sorted, and then that should be our steam sheets pretty easily sorted as well. Let's 
go down a floor to get this right. I'll just delete this. What is going on here? <laughs> Who designed this place? That's one of my pillars. Okay, so that's uh, Mark 5 for whatever reason, but okay. Bring it back to Mark 3. Sounds like more stream material to repair the sea. Yeah, exactly right. Despite these few hiccups, I think I'm actually making pretty good progress. I might be able to get this done in the stream, like actually see the 105 output, maybe. Uh, so that doesn't change. None of that stuff changes, but what does change is we need to now see... Yeah, there's our floor holes. Again, whoops. It's been done, you know, incorrectly. Oh my god. I hate the hover pack. Alright, we'll just follow the actual way in. Okay, so, unfortunately I have to just do this bit again, uh, just for these few black machines here, so not that much. This was uh, put on a foundation of one, which would be fine, but it needs to be on two, so the four holes can come through the proper height, and then we can redress it later. Nothing else needs to move, and they're getting their ore now, properly at least, or they will be. And we need to hook up water to them. Okay, so we start like that, we go to two, and just drag that out. Alright, looking good. So, let's grab the borehole, please. And then the regular floor hole as well. Looks nice. Thank you, Rosie. What was at the door, may I ask? Rosie, also, could you tell me how many viewers you have right now? I can't see. Not that it matters, but I feel like I slowed down a lot in the last few minutes and things have got a bit quiet. I know people just passively watch this anyway. Alright, cool. So we're back hooked up. Could extend this out, I guess. Under wow, 154. Uh, parcel for you, I can open, but don't press charges. That's okay. Alright, good. Just watching, that's all good. <laughs> nah, that's fine. I, I slowed down and I just realized like, oh, no one said anything in a while. But I hadn't read chat in a while either, so all on me. I think we get it. We all know what it, what has to be done. Clear up some of this um, these walkways a bit. Not necessarily as neat. Uh, maybe I'll leave that gap there. Still here. That's good. As I've said before, I'd be doing this anyway, you know. I have to ask to be done for the next episode. If we want to get that big shell running at 80 supercomputers per minute, it's got to have 80, uh, 60, Chris yeah, sorry. If we want to have that running at whatever, 40 supercomputers, we need 80 crystal oscillators. So either way, this has to be done. Someone's got to do it. Might as well be me. Bring, bring this all the way out to the end down there. Uh, 
Uh, it's also lunchtime on the U.S. East Coast. Nice. I'm uh, starving. <laughs> I'm really hungry. Rosie, can we please just get McDonald's? Can we go out and get some McDonald's? Be nice. A little dinner date. To McDonald's. I treat her well. I treat her well. Maybe a 20 second delay. Yeah, I'm aware of that. The delay on YouTube is much higher than Twitch. Don't know why. Are these Mark 1? They are indeed. I feel like I'm the only one in chat without a green name. But I've watched every episode and it's looking awesome. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. I no, you and you're not. My own girlfriend's in the chat and she doesn't have a green name. She couldn't be bothered uh, becoming a channel member. But no, that's okay. Most people don't, I feel like, have green names. Uh, at least at the beginning of streams. But I feel like the most hardcore that stick around typically do. Is this the right height? Yeah, it is, right? Yeah, just above the uh, rail line there. Ah, that one's not. Good job, Darren. KFC, uh, well, Rosie's vegan, so I don't know if KFC really has much for her. They probably have some vegan options. Oh, Rosie brought me wine gums. Nice. Then they're gone. Okay. Hey, do you want to talk on the mic so people can hear your voice again? What did you just bring me? Hi, everyone. I brought Darren some wine gums. Um, the horrible person for eating. The you're one of, you're one coming of out on when, uh, Thursday. Uh, I talked over it so you, nobody heard. Ha -ha. She's one of those. Those animal rights people. No, she's not really. <laughs> she kind of is, but not really. She's one of the good ones that doesn't uh, scream at you if you eat steak. Oh, yes, I remember this now. I remember how I did it. Okay, so I'll probably need... Uh, maybe we can just wing it. It's hard to know if I'm lined up on the grid. Oh, I can look over there, actually. That's good as well. Hi, Rosie. I love wine guns. Just joined the stream. <laughs> hey, Dominic. I, I really enjoy working with refineries, pipe work, and fluids in this game, but sometimes things just won't work right. I finished the 37x turbo fuel generator facility last night. Is the yeah, see the fluids? The the thing with fluids in this game is they don't really behave like real world fluids. And I think that throws a lot of people off. It threw me off for loads of time loads of episodes. I was putting valves on everything, trying to control the pressure, and it's like, oh the game doesn't even have pressure. It's like, oh, okay. Um, so it's just things like that, I think. But there, I feel like with fluids you just always have to assume that you need a little bit more than is stated by the numbers because there just seems to be issues with sloshing and yeah the pipes never been quite full uh how's it going it's going great yeah i'm in a great mood today Pretty rare that I am, <laughs> but I'm in a great mood. I'm normally like tired and fed up, but I'm I'm feeling good today. I'm generally just always happier when the sun's out. Sun's out, feels good, man. John, appreciate the channel membership. Thank you. You are now green. How does it feel? <laughs> It'd be cool if I could customize the color. I'd love it if I could make it blue. But it's probably for people who are on dark mode and stuff, I guess, as well. Alright. We are lined up. So now we can delete these. These orientators. Hello, Rosie. This is Etheric Bard. Rosie's my girlfriend of 11 years. Oh, something I didn't check was, can we handle all the water that's needed on one pipe? I think we can, 
but I didn't actually check that, so I'll just quickly hop up and see what that's going to be like. So, oh, it's only 10. And how many is There's 14 now in total. So yeah, we're totally fine. 140 water. So it needs two extractors then. I've seen that my heights are slightly off. These ones are good, but this one... I let my pipe network completely fill up before turning any connected machines on. Never experienced this sloshing. Yeah, well, that's because you do exactly what you just said. You let your pipe network fill up. But if you never did that, if you didn't know that you needed to do that in the game, then that's why people get, quote-unquote, sloshing. Um, but if you know about that problem, about pipe, fluid... See, if normal pipes in real world don't have fluids going back backwards. That only happens in this game because they're kind of filled arbitrarily. Each one is its own container, has its own amount of space, and each pipe, if it's full, then is able to send its like stuff where it needs to go properly. But really, you need to just think of it as in, like, you're pouring liquid into a cup rather than into a pipe. And that all the cups together, like all the pipes together, it wants to fill it all evenly before it sends it into the machine. Yeah, so it just gets a bit weird. And then you see it going back and forth. 11 years, very impressive. If anyone wants to use my beautifully annoying voice for any voiceover work for games or any animation, let me know. Our favorite YouTuber, thanks, Dominic. With comments like that, you're becoming my favorite commenter. Or live chatter. To say Rosie is a community manager for Tiny Build, the publisher. She was jokingly, but not jokingly, promoting The Bookwalker, one of their games that's coming out soon. Mark 3. Alright. Send it all on. Ooh, that was not what I wanted to do. Okay, so that's copper all hooked up to all of our new refineries now. And now we just need to add one extra extractor or overclock this one, one or the other. I think we have the space for it, so just add another one right next to it. Rotate around. And then just get one of these bad boys. Now. Why are you misbehaving? You're definitely aligned. There we go. Now we have more than we needed. If anything, we can underclock this one. We needed a hundred and... We need 210 in total. This does 120. Is it 210? No, it was 10 water. So it's 100. We only need 140. You could go way down to 20 if you really wanted to. I'll just double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's the amount. Uh, sorry, you may need to redo the lifts to connect the splitters. Oh, yeah. Do I? Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I'm eating a wine gum. <laughs> Tried to sneak one in. Ten water. Yeah, so it is. So I was giving it way more water than it even needed. Um, so yep. So there's only 14. So 140 water. So we're fine. We're locked now. Even number. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, yep. You're right. I'll have to redo these ones. But they'll snap in now, actually, which is easier. Should have just done that to begin with. Is that one of my new ones? No, it's got copper in it. All right. Yeah, now they snap. Nice. Thanks for the key night. Uh, congratulations on 11 years. My wife and I are at 11 years together as well. Known each other for 22. Wow. Yeah, me and Rosie know each other even 
I don't even know how long now. 15? Thereabouts? But congrats on on you as well, actually. It's great. Do you prefer Anna or Satisfactory? Oh man, that's like having to pick between your children. I, I really do. I pr probably probably lean towards Anno, just because it's a complete game top to bottom. This game isn't done yet, and it feels like it. Like, you know, these up when they're adding like certain updates, and I'm like, that's such these are such good quality of life features. They're getting there, you know, to this like 1.0 version that'll maybe rival Anno. But I think Anno, as much as I love this game, Anno has me just smiling at the details of the game all the time. You know, the way like people interact with the buildings and stuff. So probably would give it out, I would edge it out to Anno just because I like immersive games. But in terms of a refinement economy and stuff, well, yeah, I don't know. Anno, Anno wins, I think. <laughs> but I really love this game as well. Anno, to, Anno 1800, honestly, to me, is like a, it's a 10 out of 10. It's a really, really, really great game. I think it started out as like a 9. And then just with the free updates, became a 10. And there are very few games I say that about. It's really, really good. Whether you think you'll like it or not, I think you, people should try it. It's really, great, really great game. It reminds me of games that were made in like the early 2000s. You know, it's just like this great PC game. Felt like it's done with like love and care. And... It's very rare for me, anyway, to have uh, find a game that gives me surprises these days. Where it's like, oh, I can't believe they did that. You know, it's like, oh, they, they actually did that. Like, there's all these little things in it where I'm like, ah, that's so amazing that they did that. Um, so yeah, and it would be the one that wins out. But I really, really like this game, too. But I, I, yeah, I guess the more I think about it, I just don't think it's at that, that level. This game, to me, is like an 8. Yeah, probably like an 8. 8 for me is like, hey, that game is great. 9 is like excellent, and 10 is masterpiece, you know? 7, I think I had listed. I actually listed this all out for when I used to do reviews. 7, I think for me, was very good. 6 was good. 5 was mediocre. 4 was bad. 3 was very bad. 2, I can't remember what 2 or 1. 1 and 0, I think, were like broken slash unplayable, you know? Like literally unplayable. Um, yeah. Anyway, so they're all hooked up now, and our water is hooked up, right? The pipes should have their water. Yep. Great. So that just means we need to hook up the refineries with power, and then uh, send the copper ingots over to the correct place as well. So we'll start flying up here now. We can just extend these power lines out. I have to extend the roof out, actually, thinking about it. Master of Anno Trade Routes. Yeah, I've got something like 210 trade routes now. I wouldn't call myself a master. I feel like uh, the amount of messy trade routes I have shows that I'm not. But I'm certainly, I don't know, I'm just someone that has a lot. <laughs> uh, sorry, so I've missed a few things here. Making water extractors look neat is one of the harder things to do in Satisfactory. Yeah, you kind of have to put other things down first. You can actually put a foundation underneath the water a bit and snap them onto that so you can you can get it eventually like on the grid um wine gums look like gummy worms or gummy bears yeah so uh, i'm i have a massive sweet tooth like to the extreme i'm the only thing i would say i'm addicted to is sugar um like i'm i really love just constantly eating sweet things and uh one of my favorites is just like haribo jellies you know in ireland we, and i'm sure in other places you call them jellies some countries call them jelly candy or, you know, gummies, whatever. Jellies. Gelatin jellies. And uh, Haribo cola bottles would be, like, basically my favorite thing ever. But a, a good go-to of mine are wine gums. Maynard's wine gums, which is a... I think it's a British candy. It has them in Ireland, too. Yeah, it, I say it like it's a joke. It's like I actually can't stop eating them, so... What the hell just happened? It looked like I just... Yeah, I've linked this... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, but yeah, several times I've tried to stop and I'll go a couple weeks, but then I do eventually break. It's, it's, it's quite funny. It's funny because it's like such a harmless thing in a way, but it's, it's really not. <laughs> I don't like jelly beans, actually. Not a fan of jelly beans. Jelly beans are different. I don't know what they're made of. It's not the same, whatever it is. <laughs> I also don't like that shell that you get on jelly beans. Oh, uh, midget gems are good. Yeah, I like them. Jelly tots, pretty great. All right, there we go. So we've added our extra copper ingots, and they are just flowing up and around loosely onto this machine now, or into this row. Now the thing that we need to do is we need to split this belt somewhere down here, or down the other end, just um, manifold it the other way, actually. I could do that. And it has to go up this way. So let's do these inputs then. That's the next thing. Now it's just on, yeah, I've learned. It's on two foundations. Good. What is your opinion on candy? Uh, do you mean like a candy, like candy sticks? Those type of things? I like candy. I like it all, really. But my favorite stuff would be uh, just jellies. Yeah, chocolate, candy, anything sweet. Just love it. Uh, licorice also it's not a fan of. I actually bought my dad some recently for Father's Day. Um, but yeah, not really, never was really a fan of licorice. I haven't had it in a super long time though. Maybe like 10 years. So who knows? Maybe I've, I like it now. But yeah, my favorite candy would be like, or just different things. Milky Bar is my favorite chocolate. It's white chocolate. Love it. Not Milky Way, but Milky Bar. Nestle Milky Bar. I like Cadbury's chocolate is like a standard staple. We have an auto save coming in here. Jelly tots, sour patch is good, but S tier ranking for me is like jelly tots, galaxy bars, Milky Bar, Cadbury's. I'm a big fan of Doritos. I needed a lot of Doritos lately. Hunky Dory's, Tato would be like an Irish um, brand. Tato make like lots of different crisps and Hunky Dory's would be one of them, really good. Uh, I don't really like uh, fizzy drinks though that much. More just the ed edible foods. My dad got a cigar. Nice. Yeah, so my dad, um, like, he's in a different country to me. So I just sent him a box of, like, kind of candies and a card and a few different things. Um, I think he was really happy with it. He doesn't really want for much. So more the thought that counts. I got him before a VR headset and he was, like, blown away by it. But it is the type of thing where it was like, it was really cool just to play around with for like a couple of days and he's probably never used it since. <laughs> but it was still like really cool just to give him that experience, I think. It was so funny, him and my mom. So basically they visited me in England and uh, I bought him an Oculus Quest 2. And he did, I had my own. So uh, I showed him it. I was like, oh dad, check this out, you know, and th threw it on the computer and showed him a few things. And I showed him Google Maps, which is the thing they're most impressed by. And uh, they put on the headset and they're able to kind of like look around and walk around and see everything, kind of. And uh, they just thought it was like really immersive. But then they immediately just wanted to like spy on their neighbors. They were like, what is, uh, I've always wanted to see over this guy's wall. What does it look like? <laughs> and uh, it's like, well, you could just check that, like anyway. But I guess having the headset on, it just felt more real. They wanted to like just see certain things. They thought it was funny. But uh, then I just surprised my dad after after I got the good review and he was like, yeah, that was amazing. That was really cool. I just took out a box and showed him like I got him one. He was like really, really happy with it. Uh, and then a few weeks later, he told me he was like demonstrating it to his friends and stuff. So that was kind of cool. But I, I get him gifts that aren't just sweet sometimes, but um, it just depends if he's going to like it or not. Got him a grill. Nice. Whatever happened to the Milky Bar kid? I don't know. Well, I don't really see ads at all anymore, ever. I follow Milky Bar on Twitter, and sometimes they talk about the Milky Bar kid. Um, what am I doing, by the way? So I just linked up those machines. Yeah, there we go. So they're hooked up now. I don't think these needed to be floor holes, though, at all, do they? I think that's the mistake I've made here. They're taking in copper ingots 
from up here. Yeah, they don't need four holes. I knew there was something wrong with this. But they do need the water, so that's fine. So we just get rid of these four holes and we'll set up um, mergers. Bill is looking good. Question for you. Do you send the exact amount of water at the moment? So it's an interesting question because in looking at the build, I was overfilling it by a lot. But now I've set it to be the exact amount. So we'll see. But yeah, I mean, ideally, I'd say always send a little more. But see, I don't like machines turning on and off. You know, obviously, if you send too much, then water extractors power down and then they power back on. And that's kind of annoying. So I would try to send the correct amount if you could and see if it works. And if it's not working, then basically increase it. That's not really the way it should be done, but that's probably what I would do. All right, conveyor merger. We'll send it up this way. Sorry, splitter. Now, I just want to see if that's actually possible really quickly. I was going to say take the ingots from here. Now, they're flowing the opposite direction. Okay, well, fair enough then. Oh, wait, they're flowing down this way though, aren't they? I'm so confused. Hang on. They're flowing out. And then they're just coming back down and around the same... Oh, yeah. So they do go down this way. I thought I was looking at sheets. This is ingots. So ingots do could come out of here, conceivably. Go along this way. Ugh, it's a bit tight. And then go into there. That's where they need to go. But I could maybe shift these over a bit. I mean, there's room for a belt. There just wouldn't be any room for me to move. Not that there really needs to be. You could send it out the other way, though. I kind of want to bring it this way. The belt doesn't clip out through the wall or anything, so it's okay. Uh, this doesn't look right. Hang on. Copy whatever this is doing. That's a basic wall there. I don't know why it's like this, but whatever. We'll just put it back that way for now. Alright, you come with me. Okay, there we go. Finally, copper is now flowing, or will start flowing into all of these machines. You just have to hook those um, things up now. Let's get rid of this so we have clear visibility, and we'll just put a splitter in front of each one of these. Catch my chat just once I put this down. Requires super precision. Can't take my eye off the ball. What's the thing that makes me the most angry? I really rarely get angry. I'm actually just not really an emotional person at all. It's kind of strange. I'm a bit dead inside. But um, honestly, the thing that probably makes me the most angry is the very first world problem. It's almost like a zero world problem, which is probably video games, not living up to the expectations I have for them. <laughs> so that's probably it. But I mean, I haven't gotten viscerally, I never get mad at a game really. I do, I do get annoyed sometimes when games don't live up to their potential, I guess. But yeah, I don't really get mad about anything. People have described me as chill. Rosie's friends say like, yeah, he's chill. Because I just 
It's whatever, man. <laughs> I don't have any axe to grind about anything. What's the easiest thing to find or make in Satisfactory? Well, obviously the lowest tier goods are the easiest things to make. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. I'll leave this open, actually. Um, obviously, everything's easier at the very beginning, so... I know you're just kind of asking a question for fun, but, like... Can't really think anything... I'd almost have to think harder. I'm trying to think of it differently. Like, is there anything that seems, like, imbalanced? Where it's like, this should be harder to make, but it's actually quite easy, you know? Like, what's... What do people think is actually kind of hard, but it's actually not that bad. I think turbo fuel is pretty easy to make. A lot of people thought that would be difficult, and I think it's pretty easy. Uh, when to pick up some lunch? Glad to see you're still on. Jerry, what did you have for lunch? Um, do you make the notes at the right side of your screen? I always use signs. It gets really messy. I do make the notes, yeah. I use signs, though, for factories, because you can only hold so much on the right side of the screen. And I also make Excel sheets, so... I'll show you this one. This is the one for the factory we're dealing with right now. So every block is a group of machines, right? So refineries, there's 14 of them. This is their input. This is another input. This is the output. Simple as. And then if I say, here's what the factory currently does. It does 32. There's 32 manufacturers making crystal oscillators. So we get 60 crystal oscillators out per minute. We had eight refineries. We had 20 and then 13. We've just upgraded these now. This has now become 14. Uh, this 20 has now become 35, and this 13 has now become 23.3, because we're increasing to 56. So 23.3. These are the volumes we're dealing with now. And that's what I'm upgrading, that's what I'm literally doing right now. Steel beam suck? I can't say I had an issue with it, although I've never scaled it up largely, so... Mixing... Oh, I just used the regular, excuse me for eating, by the way. But, um... Iron and coal. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't got any um, alternate recipes for that, actually, so not sure what else you could do with it. Um, so, these are the exits are hooked up okay, yeah? And the entrances are now good. So everything's getting its copper, but we haven't hooked up the water down below. That's the next thing. Uh, let me count up how much water they need. This is doing steam uh, sheets. Okay. Alright, so the water is 22.5. So I think it's 10, right? So 225. Yep, it's 10. All right, 225 water, so it's just two more extractors, or we can see what the current extractors are free underneath are doing. Those are actually feeding up to this side. Interesting. Um, maybe I could just add on more extractors and get them to go do this row separately. I think I'll do that. That way I don't have to think too much about it and just say, yep, just two more, whatever, and then these pipes will just do their own thing, go where they need to. The awkward thing, though, is these are so far in that this will need to be a sort of raised platform, I think, that does the pipe. Yeah, if you want to keep it looking somewhat consistent. Just temporary for me to walk on for a sec. Right. Oh, sorry. How? How come you? I can't play update eight. It doesn't run very well for me. We talked about that at the beginning of the stream. Just if you did want to know why or go back and see how it looks. So I showed people how it looks for me. It's running basically at a third, about a third the frame rate I normally get. 
Uh, and on stream, I get a significantly reduced frame rate. So I normally have about 60 FPS. Right now on stream, I have 44. Um, so I usually get about, s yeah, about 60 to 70 FPS. Actually, it's normally about 70, I would say, FPS when I'm not streaming. Usually above 60. Um, but while streaming here, it's at 44. So if I, and with update 8, I'm getting about 20 something like that so it just will be far too low to be able to stream and I can't really play it at all anyway encroaching another clearance uh oh can these not go up here because the extractors are in the way that sucks where's your bounding box where does it even end what if I came up this high That's okay. Okay. This will make sense in one sec. So I'm just going to put down a pipe junction thing here. Extend the pipe the whole length down. And then trim away the edges. And then try to connect it together from the bottom. That makes sense in a sec. These had... Yeah, they need. it needs its own pump as well. Okay. It only needs a level 1 pipe, so let's just bring this all the way down. Got to turn on anarchy, yeah, I know, right, yeah. Um, I never ho know how to organize my spreadsheets, but yours looks pretty good. Good to try that next time. Yeah, I like this setup a lot. Just to show it one more time, I actually improved it a bit when I made a new Excel sheet recently. Um, but doing these little blocks like this, I think, is a good good way to do it. And then I basically just lay it out from left to right, right? So like we have the output copper ingot. So if I can, I put that next to whenever that becomes the input again and so on and so forth. This is just like a separate thing. But um, if I just open up the supercomputer builds, there we go. This one got a bit more complicated, a lot more going on on it. And instead of working back from the amount of machines, I actually set a target of what I want. So I changed the formula just slightly. Previously, I had it set so that, like, I'm like, how many manufacturers am I going to build? And that's how I determine how many crystal oscillators I get, which is why we're doing 56 manufacturers, which gives me an even number for crystal oscillators. But this way, I can actually just set the target. It's a little bit more dynamic, I guess. Um... And yeah, it works the same way. So if I want my target of supercomputers to be, I don't know, 80, we can, all the numbers should hopefully adjust correctly. And it even tells me the power and the manufacturers that we need and all this kind of stuff. So 40 is the target I'm going with. Although I'll probably only make 20. I think instead of making 21 of these, I'll only power on 10 of them and save the... So instead of 80 computers, we'll save 40, we'll save 40 AI limiters, we'll have 60 high-speed connectors, and we'll use about a th uh, 500 less plastic. The only reason I'm thinking of doing that is because I don't know what I need so many supercomputers for, and it would be nice to have an excess of these things. So that's my initial goal, is to actually have everything as it stands, but just to not turn on the final 10 machines uh, and save up the extra amounts. And that way our factory isn't just a supercomputer factory, it's a... Computer, AI limiter, high-speed connector, technically plastic, I guess, as well, and supercomputer factory. And some of that extra plastic, I thought about this before, but I might reroute back into circuit boards so we can save up on circuit boards, but I don't know about that yet. That could be complicated based on the layout of the building. Yeah. Is update still rubbish for you? Yes, unfortunately, yeah. Oh, I didn't see what Jerry had. Chicken Caesar wrap. Oh, yes. Sounds good, man. Especially with the jalapeno. I'm not that good at Excel. I just use Satisfactory Tools Production Calculator. Yeah, a lot of people just use the website. Or, um... Oh, is that going to fit, actually? 
from here to here. Oh, yes, it does. Great. Um, yeah, I did. When I was on Satisfactory. What is it? Calculator? Yeah, satisfactorycalculator.com. I can appreciate what they've done with the site and everything, but I just prefer doing it myself. Like, I prefer my own layout because I found the UI really cumbersome to navigate. The end result of what you get out of it when you have the right data in there is cool. You get to see a little network graph of, like, where everything goes in the various machines and that was that's super cool love it but um i just find it really finicky to say like what current recipes you have it sort of seems like it assumes if you just were to unlock everything and if you're playing like a creative mode it's like no like i don't have all the alternate recipes you know i don't want to see all that stuff i have to like go in and manually toggle it i don't even want to see it though so i'd rather just make it out of what i know i can do which is what i've been doing but yeah i'm a bit um very particular with these certain things. I've got all these little weird rules in my head. Some people were saying certain things about city skylines and how you can get roads that you don't have to pay maintenance or like we were talking about earlier, like the water tower um, exploit thing in this game. And I'm like, I just don't want to do any of that stuff, you know? <laughs> I've got very particular rules about what I do with these games to get my enjoyment out of them, I guess. Alright, we're looking good. Alright, it took a little while, but now we have a suspended pipe feeding up into all these machines. And what we have to what we can do is just uh look them up to these two things. So it doesn't really matter where, but maybe just from the end one we'll bring this down. Straight down or something. Connect it onto the walkway. Happy to see you streaming. Thanks, Trousty. Happy to see you here. Green name and all. Same with the real Ogre Bane. Damn, I'm not that good. Oh, yeah, I read that already. I don't know why, but I really hate making crystal oscillators. I actually quite liked it. I didn't mind it too much. And radio control units was fun. Fused frames I thought was fun, too. Supercomputers is a bit of a pain. I can't think of much that I actually really, like, I can say I don't, didn't like making. I don't like making ammo. Making that gunpowder and black powder thing, and then having to make nobelisks and stuff, and make gun ammo. I don't like making any of that stuff. I will make a weapon factory sometime, but, oh, yeah. Stealing with sulfur, I'm not really a fan of. This could, I guess, basically just link up here eventually. I know that these have been offset for a while. I can hide that sometimes, but I'll just leave it for now. It's it'll take it too long to mess with that right now. Ultimately, I just need to bring one of these pipes down here somewhere. So let's grab this. I kind of want it to come down and then... Because, yeah, let's get our spacing correct on this first. I don't know why they come in so far. They don't need to go that far in. You can be on this, I think. Okay, looking good. All right, so. The pipe has an invalid shape. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, cool. There we go. So we need a pump on that. I think uh, it's just a Mark 1 pump, right? All of these just have a Mark 1 on it. And because pumps are so cheap, who would care about saving 4 megawatts of power? Not me. So we'll just do this. There. And then I guess we just need to hook these up to power.
Uh, did this YouTube channel get renamed at some point? Yes. It used to be called um, Republic of Let's Play. When I had about, I want to say, 35,000 subscribers, I changed it to What Darren Plays. Why do you ask? Heavy Modular Frames needs like 300 machines, and you produce five. <laughs> nah, it's not that bad. Oh, well, actually, I guess from top to bottom it does, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was thinking, like, you don't need that many manufacturers, but I was like, well, I guess for everything that's involved with it, yeah. I don't know. I didn't find it not fun. This, yeah, I don't know. Volume doesn't scare me. It's complexity. I suppose it's fairly complex as well. Alright, so what did we actually need for this place? We need 225, so that's 120, 240. We could bring one down. The exact amount if we wanted to. 225. Flowing out along that way. Damn it, I knew no matter what I did, it just did not look right. Alright, there we go. Okay, so that's my 225 water now flowing along this way up and then being fed into every machine above here. And we've just sent them the copper, so that should be our copper sheeting being made now. I think. Uh, these haven't been powered though yet, so we have to do that as a final thing. So, copper sheet. Their outputs are already linked to the extra copper sheeting we have as well, I think. And I, oh, I don't know if I accounted for that. How many machines are there? 23 now. 23 doing copper sheets, so... 23 times 22.5. 517. These have been upgraded. It's a Mark IV belt, so they'll need to be upgraded. Mark V. Okay. Alright, copy those settings and we'll just paste them on every machine and then we'll power them on. Ah, oh, shit. Pasted, paste. Uh, thanks for the awesome stream. Have a great week and a good rest of the stream. Thanks, Lady Ha. Have a good rest of your day. Have you started planning your battery factory? No, not until I finish the supercomputer factory will I do that. I just know I need one if I want to get drones, so at some point I'll have to do it. I haven't looked for what's included or what's needed, actually. I don't even want to look at it. It'll just give me anxiety. <laughs> It'll just give me worries about what I've got to do. Better just to focus on one thing at a time, I think. Alright, so power it is. Power is coming off of this side, okay. I like to do my power pretty much straight up. Alright, so let's just hook all these up together.
All right, the water is flowing in, the copper ingots are flowing in, and the copper sheets should start flowing out. Um, we're already backed up because, of course, we're going to be sending too much into whatever is using that already. So that's going to be going over here to the assemblers, which are making AI limiters. So i got to figure out what, how much more now of those do we need. So crystal oscillators. So we went from, if I have a look at how many we have now, 32. We have currently 12 assemblers, and we're going to have 21. Now, where do we put them? I'm thinking above. We've got a lot of space up above them that could probably fit them in there. Might not look very elegant, but they would fit, so I reckon we stack them on top of each other. Shouldn't be too difficult. I think that's that done, right? I, I don't think I've missed anything now. We just have to upgrade the belt the whole way around. But other than that, in fact, I can lock these two say that we did those. Alright, so that's done. So, so far in the process, we've done all the refineries. They're all done now. Caterium ore and Caterium ingots, actually. We haven't done those ones. So these are the final refineries, I guess. So we added 15 more refineries. I've added their... floor holes and things. Did I do it out this way, right? Yeah, it's 2 meters, so that's good. So they're already ready to go. They need more Caterium ore, though. Um, there's actually a quite a large bank of it right now, so it shouldn't be an issue. I think they'll basically run for a while. Hey, Vince. Yeah, I only stream once a week, and I just stream this at the moment. Just trying to think how I'm going to do that then. So, yeah, so there's all our new section. And it's actually kind of nice to see that it's right there. So one thing that's going to have to be done is i got to remove these pillars. They're in the way. They'll be extended further out. So let's just get chop some of these away right now. What is the YouTube version of Kappa? I think it's just Kappa. But I don't know if there's actually an emote for it. I don't know. The emotes on YouTube aren't very good. I've never even looked at them, to be quite honest, <laughs> to what the emotes are. I watch two streamers on YouTube, and I've never once looked at emotes. They have their own, though, I guess, if you subscribe. I should probably update mine. I think I can have more than I have. And sorry, we're just um, going through an autosave right now. What time is it now? 3 hours 30. It's got another 30 minutes, and then we... Wrapping it up. TF didn't work, I guess. I don't know if it's colon and then... I don't know. I just have no idea. There's pride emotes that you can use. <laughs> hey, thanks for the sub, Combat Smurf. When will the stream end? Probably in about 30 minutes. Oh no. Oh, that's oh so close, but it's okay. We're just about squeeze in where they need to go. Actually, it wouldn't be too big of a problem because we've got lots of room up there. All right, my little basement dwelling area can uh, be extended out, I guess. Doesn't seem to want to play ball though while that's there. All right, we'll need different lanes for these and we'll need more Caterium. So I got to check on a few things. We can go out and explore the wilderness for a bit. I need to see how much Caterium we're currently making versus how much we need now. Because I'm just upgrading this place. So for those who are just joining, I'm increasing the volume that this particular factory is making. And in doing so, you know, a lot of the rates for the machines and stuff are changing. So we need to see where it gets its materials from and what it currently is lacking.
Yeah, it's cutting it a bit close. I could move them further. There's no real big commitment on that, which is good. And in fact, I would like to do that, because then I could maybe cut away that part of the building, and the arches would still stand out away from the building, if that makes sense, you know? They'd stand on their own. So this is where we get Caterium ore from. A truck drives this little route. Ah, sorry. Um, and I, th I have a feeling they're on two impure nodes. I don't think we'll actually be able to get the amount we need, but maybe. Yeah, there they are. It's going to eat my last wine gum. Uh, I really like and appreciate how well you organize your builds are. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Do the refineries take in more water than they use? Like with the ore, they'll take in a backlog of material. They're not supposed to. They're supposed to use exactly what I've... Even for the material, excuse me, I've found in this game that even if, let's say you have a machine that needs 100 of something, and you produce 100 of something, I have found that over time, long time, 20, 30 hours, that those machines will fill up. And I don't know why that is. It's like everything produces a decimal point more than it needs, you know? Or consumes a decimal point less, something like that, because... Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, even if you have an awesome sink and everything, every bit of overflow is going into a bin somewhere, you just still fill up the machines. I just don't really know how that keeps happening. But it does. Uh, so 240 per minute. If we overclock it further, we get 300. So we get 600. So how much do I need in total? I need 840. Yikes. Okay, so I don't have enough here. That's a problem. If we turn on resources, we can see I'm using two Caterium nodes here. That's going to be 600. There is one right across here, and that's Pyrrhus. So that does 600 on its own. There's also 600 here waiting to be tapped. This one's pretty close, but it's on a real awkward terrain. But we could build a bridge over to it. It'd be way more than we'd need in this factory, though. Hmm. I just got completely turned around there for a second. Oh yeah, I was thinking of building a bridge. Okay, let's have a look at that real quick. Um, I love the northern forest, so nice with the new trees. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. They just look really nice. Oh, we have one of these fat trees here. Is this the one you meant, or did you mean these ones? Because I like those ones. I don't like these ones. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, they're uh, not really reacting to me too much. Oh, he's like checking on his buddies. He just ran right over to both of them, just looked at them. Look, like Phil. John? Oh, I tried to shoot him. <laughs> Might as well put him out of his misery. The dark brown ones, yeah. Can't you use Mark III miners? I haven't unlocked them yet, but that's actually a good idea. How much more do you get out of Mark III? I sorry, I have unlocked them, but I haven't um, built the things to get them yet. I don't have any supercomputers, but I could. And turbo motors. I could craft them, probably, right? That's a great idea, man. You'd save me a lot of time if I do that. Let's see if we can craft these things. So, turbo motors. I've never made a turbo motor before. What does it need? Rubber. Dude, I can make these. Easy. Yeah, let's do it. Need two of them. Fused frames, turbo motors, and supercomputers. Oh, I might be a little tight on high-speed connectors. I could craft that, I guess. You can craft all these things by hand if I really needed to. Because I'm building a new factory that's going to do that. <laughs> 
Uh, right. Yeah, let's have just a little bit of fun and run around and try to get some of these materials together. I think I can do it. Where's my car? Did I bring my car up here? I feel like I did. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Get off it. It's not a mating object. Alright, there's two places I can drive to really quickly to get what I need, and then we can drive back. How's it coming along? I was getting on look. Unload. You were getting unloaded at customers. What does that mean? <laughs> um, yeah, things are going good. Yeah, almost all the refineries are in place. I realized I need a lot more Caterium ore than is available to me, but someone pointed out... Already missed who it was, so apologies for that, but someone in the chat just pointed out, why don't you use Mark III miners? And I forgot, I have unlocked them, and if we overclock them, I think I would get enough out. I needed... Would I, though? I'll still do it anyway, just for the fun of it, but... I need 840 ore. There's two impure nodes, even if they're Mark III. Well, I don't know how much necessary I get out of them, right? It's 240, I think, or something. All right, hang on. What is happening? My chat keeps just disappearing on me, and then I tabbed out of the game. All right, I'm back. And then my car is making no noise. There we go. Right, just for a little while, I'll put down some of this, this, and this. So, supercomputers, do I have... So I needed... Let's just put down a crafting bench. Just for fun, even though I don't need the music right now. I'm going to put on that Metal Gear music that I had before. It doubles it, I think? Oh, okay. All right, so let's start. So the first thing I'll need is six portable miners. Well, we'll do that last actually, because it's, well, I only need two because I'm upgrading the ones that are in place already. That's not too bad. Um, supercomputers, 10 supercomputers. All right, let's start off with making those. So to make 10 supercomputers, I am missing regular computers, which I think we have some here. Well, I've got 50 supercomputers here, so that kind of already does the job for me. So let's take that. We've also got high-speed connectors, which is good. Fused frames. I think I'll have to go to my fused frame factory for that. I don't think I've left any over here. Yeah. I'll have to run over there. But that's okay. So we've gotten one portion of the stuff we need already. Fused frames. And then turbo motors. So how to make a turbo motor. So I'm missing rubber and cooling systems. Hmm. Well, that's a pain. So let's just... Okay, what's the cooling system needed then? Actually, hang on. Oh no, can I not craft a cooling system? Maybe I haven't unlocked it yet. Oh, I, th I don't think it would even show it to me if I unlocked it. Made in a blender. Oh, that's why. Okay, I can still make it. So I need heat sinks and motors. And then we've got loads of gas. All right, this is good. Let's get going. Actually, just before we do, I'm gonna pick up some of the rubber that's in here. Sorry for the frame rate. It's just in this area in between um, biomes or whatever. So it just, it lags. But once we get going, it'll be okay. Yeah, I got loads in, loads of excess gas. Don't you worry. All right, let's just take all this with us. Let's get the hell out of here. All 
Mark three miners fully overclocked on an impure node will produce 300. Uh, maybe these aren't impure then. Are they just normal? Because I already get more than that out of them. Oh, they're normal. So whatever it does on normal. Most annoying creature satisfactory, the big bean thing? Yeah, totally. Easily. It's not even a question. Even the hostile mobs aren't as annoying as them. Well, maybe the giant spider, but other than that. Alright, so I'm going to my fused frame factory. This is where we've got excess nitrogen gas, so we should be able to pull together what we need to make the turbo motors. What is the soundtrack playing in the background? It's from Metal Gear Solid 2. I'll sh the reason I'm playing that is because I'm building Big Shell in the distance, which we can go back to just towards the end of the stream. I'll show it off one more time. It looks really cool. It's going to be doing supercomputers. They need to make a road out here or something in the future. Okay. Alright, we're here. The fused frame office block. <laughs> like a glove. Alright. We needed fuse frames, 20 fuse frames. Let's go up to the top floor for that. It's great to see you live. I'm only on video 12, but your builds make a lot of sense and are easy to follow. Awesome. Glad, glad to hear it, Swivy. There are no impure Caterium nodes. Oh, that's good to hear as well. Alright, here we are. Fused frames. Bonk. Alright, so turbo motors is next. And this is our gas pipeline, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now we've got multiple gas pipelines, two of which are not even in use. So we could bring them up and maybe make a makeshift blender or something up here. Uh, maybe a blender would even fit here, just temporarily. We need 10 modular frames. Okay, we have everything we need. We'll just go upstairs and then I'll pipe gas up there. Luckily, no pumps or anything needed, so we can just do it real messily. We're in a messy fashion at the beginning. So we have to make a cooling device. I don't have the water with me right now, so we'll just do it with the gas, the motor, the heatsink. There's your motors. Let's see if we can make heat sinks. Yes, we can. Um, is my safe available? No, not at the moment. Uh, I'm curious, did you ever decide how you're going to do the railway station for Big Shell? 
Not yet, no. Still kind of working that out. I built the core area though, though. So we can have a look at that, but um... I haven't fully decided if I'm going to put the station below or raise the tracks into it. One or the other. Alright, maybe we'll make 20. I think it said we needed 5. Okay. Alright, you need gas. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have to rotate this around. Smooth. Nitrogen gas. Alright, let's power it on. Turning. Now, how many of these do we need for turbo motors? I need four for one. I need 16 then. 16 cooling systems. And then we can make our turbo motors. I'll need more heat sinks then. All right. Have a good day. Signing off, Darren. He's a good YouTuber for advice on different games and is overall great. Bye. Thanks, Dominic. Sorry if I missed any of your chat earlier. A couple of episodes ago, you asked if someone calculated, quote, global production rates, including how many of X material you ever need per minute to finish the game in a reasonable time. I know one German streamer YouTuber, Schkuki, that did it, but I'm sure there's plenty more like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the first person to think of it. Also, it's like you could have different minimums, right? Because it all depends on how fast you want to make that end product. If I want to make the end products in one minute, you'll need a vastly different amount of stuff than if I was to say, actually, what about 10 hours? So I guess that's where it comes in as well. You have to decide what is a reasonable amount of time to do it in. Let's throw these in here. Already made eight. I needed what was it, twenty-four or something? I'll just make the. I know we could make an assembler. We'll just do it by hand. It's fine. I'm nearly out of copper sheets though. I don't know if we make any in here. I don't think so. All right, that's all we got. Yeah, we have copper ingots, but I don't think we make copper sheets. I was just checking, just in case. I barely remember this place does anymore. Never did clean up these wires. Every now and then the place gets backed up. There's one issue with it, according to... St apparently steel pipes are a little inaccurate, somehow. Alright, we'll go back up. Oh, there was a pole in this. <laughs> uh, we made 20. 22. Oh my god, I think I'm the tiniest bit short. Um, so to make copper sheets, I just need ingots, right? Let's just grab some ingots. Oh, we have to go so low. <laughs> Maybe 50? Have you ever considered making a project train? It's a train with all basic goods to prevent running back and forth. 
Yeah, I usually do it when I'm about to do builds. Um, it's just that what I was doing today was really not planned for at all. Uh, so the train that I normally have that moves material... I don't have a train that goes on loops. I have a train that has loads of concrete and lots of different things on it, but I move it when I need to go to a new site. Um, I normally never have to do running back and forth. It's really, really, really rare. Because often... Here's... I'll show you why. When I'm going to build something, I basically have it like all laid out. I know what I need. I know everything I need, top to bottom. So I'm like, oh, I need 14 refineries, 35 refineries, whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I just put it into Satisfactory and I go, okay, I'm going to need 20 of these, whatever. And then that's usually it. It's so rare that I have to run somewhere. But today I'm doing it a lot because none of this was really planned for, I guess. So, yes, I could arguably have it for this. But every factory I've ever built, I've just brought up the materials because I've always known what I was going to need. And usually I just bring copious amounts of concrete as well because you never know exactly how much you need of that. Um, so, yeah. I appreciate the thought, but I, I really felt like, gener generally, maybe I'll eat my words and the further and further I go in the game. I really felt like I just did not need that much stuff where I had to run around too much. This time I'm, like I need Mark III, first of all, if I was, wasn't live streaming, I never even would have thought of that, but putting down a Mark III miner. I haven't automated any of this stuff yet, so I've had to run back to this factory to see like, oh yeah, I guess I can make turbo motors myself. But I have to first now, like I'm crafting copper by hand, shows you that. None of this was planned for. Uh, so, sheets. There we go. That should be enough to get the last heat sink done, though. I just looked up how to automate the supercomputer. It's a bit too complicated for my liking. Any tips for starting it? Yeah, I'll show you my setup anyway, and how I'm doing it. If, you, if people could hang around for another 15 minutes or so, after I make these turbo motors and put down the miners, then I'm going to my, quote, big shell area, and we can see what I'm doing for supercomputers. Um, and I'll show you what I've got in place already. Oh, I needed, um, yeah, sorry. I'll just make these, and that should be the last of it. I think. Okay, we're good. That's the last two cooling systems that we needed. I don't know why I keep deleting it, but we need it for turbo motors, don't we? we can already make five. Are they made in a manufacturer? Oh my god, I've never even seen that. Magnetic field generator. <laughs> Everything's full. Oh my god. Alright, turbo motors have been made. I think that's pretty much it. I'll just leave this on just in case we need to put more stuff into it. Um, so it's gonna take a while. How much do we need? We only needed six, and then I need six portable miners. I think I need four, or maybe just two, because we've already got two in place. It's an equipment workshop, isn't it, for those? I'm excited to actually have Big Shell have something in it. It's just a shell. <laughs> Pardon the pun, at the moment. There they are, in their glory. Hell, hell yeah. Let's see, what did they take to make? They took cooling systems, which required gas. Other than the gas, though, that was easy enough. Radio control units. So that's something that we need radio control units for. I have 15 per minute of those, or we did. I just deleted it, but we can easily get 15 per minute. It's interesting to see that they go into the construction of turbo motors. Hmm. And then if this is turbo motor, the default amount will be 3.75 per minute. 
four. So I can make... Hmm. I can make seven and a half turbo motors per minute if I use all my radio control units. Don't know if that's a good number or not. And there we go. That's all six. Done. That was fun. It's been a while since I've made something new. It's kind of cool. Alright, let's get going then. We'll head back. Back to that Caterium mine. The good thing is to use a blueprint to create a one-click factory for basic products like iron plates, wire cables, etc. That's tr that's cool too, as well, yeah. You can place it in a different location on the map, so you're never far from those essential items. This frees up your inventory. Yeah, that's true. Again, I just really haven't had issues with this, but I agree. That sounds like a good idea. Just making a, like the base tier ingredients out of blueprints super quickly. Ugh, don't have computers with me. Alright, sweet. So it's just up and over there. We can put the Mark III miners in, see how much we're getting out of these things. You fixed update 8? Nope. Turbo fuel is so much stronger. Uh, nope. I haven't fixed update. I'm still in update 7. This is update 7. you drive the dune buggy? I did, yeah. I just decided to run back. I knew where it was. I just, I don't know. Thought it'd be a bit different to just hop around a bit. Ought to save time. I honestly don't think the buggy would have been that much quicker. <laughs> Auto save is super, super long while streaming. It seems like streaming this game anyway is giving me like a 20, 30 FPS hit. Significant slowdown when it comes to um, the save. This area is unplayable in Update 8. Why is that? A lot of stutters? Oh, okay. Need another portable miner. It is four, not two, not uh, two. She's a thick girl. Holy crap. 240 now. Let's see what we got. Yes. Excellent. Right. We only need it. Um, let's see. Oh, wrong. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong Excel. 840. 
840. Couldn't do that with the previous one. The 420 out of this one, 420 out of the other one will be all we need. I mean, it goes into a truck bay anyways, but... Yeah, at max it was doing 300. Nice, that's a significant upgrade then. And that's really nice because now nothing really has to change other than I need to just add a second belt coming out of the truck station, like at the receiving end. So that makes it a little easier. Alright, so we'll just fly quickly back over, just have a look one last time in this factory, then I'm going to go to Big Shell, and then uh, we'll call it a day. But at least I've got it worked out now, what, we, what needs to be done. So all I have to do on my own to get this up to 80 is stack... Double up the constructors by stacking them on top of each other and double up the assemblers by stacking them on top of each other. And that's basically it. Well, obviously then just adding the final um, manufacturers, but that's easy. There's lots of room for them. The refineries were probably the most complicated because they had to fit above the water and fit inside the quite tight area of that building. Yeah, the miner's thick. Do you need to upgrade the belts to the truck station? Oh yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I probably do. So, if I recall correctly, it's been a while, but I think the Caterium ore flows into there. It just does that just so I can see it. There's no need for it. It just does. Well, that's odd. What's going on here? Oh, they do both flow in, do they? Oh, they do. That's good. Only one comes out though, yeah, so they'll need two going out. I mean, it just didn't need the box at all. It's There's two coming in, and they'll probably just go straight towards the machines with a buffer in between. Maybe two separate buffers, rather than a double stack like this, because otherwise it's just awkward to pull it out. But it would need something, you know, effectively like that. And that'll just go over to the, um, the same place it's going now, but it'll just have to be split up. So yeah, it just goes down and it goes straight down below and then into all these machines. Alright, it's kind of messy. I don't know. It goes up and over and down below and all sorts. Um, I'll wait for it to be... Actually, the sun rising on Big Shell will look kind of nice. So I'll go over and update those belts. I won't forget. I'll do it straight after this pretty much. I knew I had the right amount of mi miners because it gives you back the ones you don't need. Anyway, whatever. Alright, let's go head out to... Got a truck downstairs, actually. We can take that. Alright. This corridor with the blue thingies will look amazing on Update 8 once you manage to get it running nicely. Yeah, I mean, I've seen... Um, so just really quickly, I can show while well, I'm waiting for the sun to rise anyway. Let's see where it is. Recording... This is the first time I ever ran it at all, so I was checking out the lighting, I think. And I was like, oh no, I'm at like 20 FPS. Do you have a better one? That was when I turned everything down to low and I realized my FPS was the same. God help anyone that plays on the lowest settings. God help them. Because <laughs> it looks so bad. This is still low settings again. This is high settings, new save. That's where it looks great. I'm trying to find, because uh, I did go into a few of my factories with the lighting and everything, and I was like, oh, it's so cool. But maybe I didn't record it. There's no lights in here, but I did go into those ones. This is where I felt like I was in slow motion. That was fun. So this is the same area, but... <laughs> I 
That's what you're dealing with when you're at 16 FPS. That's the area I'm in right now, but in update 8. Super fun. Yes, yeah, so this is update 8. I wanted to see what it looked like when I went upstairs. There we go. Also, all the vegetation has grown back in, so <laughs> there's trees in the middle of my factory now, but it's no problem. 21 FPS. Let's go. Let's see, I take one of these tubes up, I think. Yeah, this is awesome. I was like, holy shit, everything's just so dark. <laughs> I was trying to see if they had any, like, reflection on the ground from the lights. Sometimes the belts do. I think the tier 5 ones do. Yeah, there you go. Oh my god, that looks so cool. I was like, whoa. Everything has a little light, basically. These are tier 4 belts, I think, actually. These ones. This looks awesome. I was like, this is so cool. And then there's my factory running. All the um, smelters, foundries, refiners doing their thing. This is interesting because I was trying to see, um, I had mentioned this before, these LED strips and if they'd look any good or not, and they do. They look great. So I cut the lights in a second. Yeah, so I cut the light and I'm like, oh yes, that's exactly like what I envisioned when I was thinking of the how it would look like strip lighting. So I was like, yeah, pretty happy with the, how that looked. I don't know if I went on to look at anything else. Yeah, just generally, things just looked really cool. A lot more fog and bounce lighting in the atmosphere, I guess. Like, even just going by that, I was like, yes. This, like, the fog always looked good. It looks way more thick. And that lighting is bouncing off it much more naturally now. Oh yeah, my old factory, it's like super dark inside. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, no, it looks cool. It's not, that's not what's tanking my FPS. My FPS isn't being, it doesn't change when I have low settings or high settings. So I'm sure once it gets optimized again, I'll be able to play on high. Oh yeah, that's my Caterium factory. I think I do go inside the motor factory. Yeah, this is where I really noticed one of the things just in particular. Climbing up these stairs, I was like, oh shit. This looks so cool. And I actually took a screenshot of this. See you later, Etheric Bard. Thank you very much for the super chat. And welcome, Chris Greenall. Thank you very much for becoming a channel member. So just the way that lighting was bouncing off the logistics sign and also from the power sign, I thought that was so cool. Also, sorry that your things probably didn't appear. The alerts. There they are. Chris Green all became a member. Appreciate that. The alerts are actually below for some reason. Everything. Let's stick them back up now. They'll appear next time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, I think that's a decent enough showcase of like obviously what it can look like if it just ran well. But yeah, we're not quite there yet. All right. I'm going to drive down to Big Shell real quick. And I'll talk through my supercomputer setup and then and we'll bounce at least the plan for it. I'll talk through it quickly. My starter factory is all overgrown now, and I don't want to cut the foliage. It looks abandoned. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. It is like it's abandoned. There's no plan for now on optimize. It's not the graphics that need optimizing. Not the graphics. Like I said, I can turn off Lumen. I can turn all the settings down to, to low, 
and my FPS is the same. It's not even like, oh, you took a dip or anything. It's no difference. I'm obviously having some weird hardware issue where, regardless of setting, my FPS is just pretty much set to 20 FPS. So, yeah. I appreciate not everyone was here every time I've explained that, though. But just so you know, I'm not talking about them needing to optimize Unreal Engine 5. Specifically, I'm just saying the game's core functionality, regardless of graphics, seems to be kind of screwed up. Alright, so, big shell. We're back. So, this is my supercomputer setup. Um, so, just to help out that person that was wondering about it. So, effectively, to go through some of the recipes, I have my... Not that one. I'll have to open up the other one in a sec. Just bear with me, and I'll tell you exactly what we're using. Right, so, I mean, it's an intimidating build. Supercomputers isn't, I don't think it's easy. It's late game for sure. So for me, I set a target of 40 supercomputers per minute, but I think I only need 20, so maybe you should work with 20, but I'm, I am going for 40. I've chosen Spire Coast to do it. And for the most part, a lot of the stuff is up here, but not 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 entirely. A lot of the oil I needed is here. In fact, that's the only thing that's here. I already I meant to say I already have the other stuff in other places, and I'm going to bring it in via rail. So basically, what I needed was 2,200 Caterium ore. So I've gotten that. It's in a rail network now. So you may remember if you've been following along, I've built these things I've been calling transport hubs. So here's a transport hub. It's basically like eight truck stations and like drone ports and a train station all in one so the trucks pull in resources from around here feed it into here and then the train sends it over to other stations so thanks to that and thanks to the one i have down here which you can see the trucks are busy with they're collecting all of the iron and the copper that's around here so there's copper extraction copper extraction iron extraction so i guess the way i did it was i started looking at areas where i could get the resources get trucks to drive them into some sort of hub, put them on a rail that then sends them up to wherever they need to go. So they'll be coming up here. So that's how I get my copper ore, my caterium ore, and anything else I'll need. So that's caterium and that's copper. Water, obviously in abundance up here. I'm at Spire Coast, so we can just pull it in from anywhere we need. Crude oil, that's also being pulled in here. So 80 refineries, the so 79.8 means I need 80. 80 refineries are going to be making plastic with a byproduct of heavy oil. So if we check this out here, they're making plastic with a byproduct of heavy oil that's then going to go into this strut, into strut F, which is up there. That's going to be doing power. Uh, it's some of the byproducts of heavy oil. The other heavy oil is going to go into making like wire and cable and stuff. So let's see, where are we? Heavy oil here. Heavy oil in a ref 20, 18 refineries doing wire, heavy oil, putting out cable. Anyway, I guess my advice without going through absolutely everything would be, you know, I've got these extraction buildings putting all the raw ore onto trains. You could you could refine it if you want first, but I, I like doing it all in one place. So all the ore is going to come in here. Caterium, copper, uh, the crude oil is here. We're going to refine the caterium into ingots here and here. That's going to then refine into quick wire and wire. So there's going to be eight thousand quick wire it's quite a lot when we mix those two together next over then from some of the crude oil we make that plastic the quick wire they go together to make circuit boards in 40 assemblers and so on and so forth right copper and water copper sheets wire and heavy oil cable and then we're into the busier area where we do the core i i call it right so we have 80 computers being made here 80 ai limiters and 120 high-speed connectors so what i'm probably going to do as I mentioned before, the final manufacturing layout is here. 21, 22 manufacturers doing 40 supercomputers. What I'm going to do probably is turn off 10 of them or half of them, you know. And that way we'll save 40 computers, save 40 AI limiters, save 60 high-speed connectors and save on plastic as well. Should I wish to do something else with it? If I end up needing more supercomputers, then I'll just ramp it back up to 40. Hopefully that'll be enough for the future. That's the plan. So the way it's all laid out, as I've mentioned, you know, 
several times now, obviously, is every single strut has its own kind of thing to do. And then they have their own direction of where they're sending other materials. So we have the core, which is going to be handling a lot of the end products because it needs the fewest amount of machines. So computers, supercomputers, circuit boards, and high-speed connectors. But it also is going to handle all of the material that's coming in. So somewhere, this is going to need a train station below it. And that long line that goes down, right there is the height of my train line. So I either got to raise the train line quite a lot, or I need to build a mini floor underneath to hold the station that sends things up. That would kind of ruin the aesthetic of the build, to be quite frank. But it might have to do that. One or the other. Anyways, long story short then, everything always comes out of the core. So the oil goes down here, plastic goes in here, gets helps make the, well the um, heavy oil obviously goes in here, helps make the wire cable, copper sheeting. Some of that goes back into the core. In order to make the copper sheeting cable in the wire, we need copper ingots the ore travels from the core into c c goes down to b to help make this stuff and then the product goes back into the core some of c goes into d because copper mixed with caterium that's in e gets mixed in d and goes into here so there's eight thousand caterium so if we were to quickly go on a little adventure i know that we need eight thousand quick wire a lot of belts so let's head up one of these towers and see um Check these bridges out, right? The bridges are all built now with these volumes in mind. So you don't need to do it any way this complicated, but you could do it in silos the way I'm doing it. You know what I mean? Like you could have, hey, this section of this build does all the caterium. This section does all the copper. And then somewhere we link these things together. So you don't have to do it in a roundabout hexagonal way. But I think compartmentalizing these builds when they get to this volume is necessary. So you could think of it as almost like it's almost like this is seven factories, you know? There's one whole Caterium factory, there's one whole Copper factory, there's one whole Quick Wire factory, and so on and so forth. So I think out that way is F, and we want to get to D. D's on the opposite side, so maybe we could just go straight across. Are you sharing these sheets? I'd love to see how they set up all the formulas. Uh, no, not sharing anything. <laughs> maybe I will someday, but it's just Excel. I mean, I've shown it. I, I don't know. Yeah, I feel a bit weird just sharing publicly, like, here's the Excel file for you to download. I'd have to, like, I don't know, put it on Google Drive, I guess, or something. I've got no problem with it. I'm not, like, hoarding it or anything, but it's really quite simple. But it's, they're tailor-made to my build. They don't really work if you add in another ingredient, unless you know how to make the formula, you know? Um, and I'm happy to give out my blueprints. I always say this every week. I'll probably give out blueprints for anyone that wants them at some point as well. The save file I won't be given out until I probably finish the game. Anyway, so here's the, um, so that one's doing Caterium. Caterium flows along into here, and this is making quick wire, and all this is for handling all the quick wire coming out, because it's going to be 8,000, so it's quite a lot. I think it's 12 belts, because 12 times 780 was more than what we needed. 11 was 8,580, yeah, so 11 is what we needed. 10 was too short, and I added in a 12 just so that it would look even. But we still have to put some of the doors on and things like that. That's it. It's come together. I'm pretty proud of it. It took a while to get the uh, edges right on these things. It is a big giant square ultimately. But it needs windows and some other things to give it some flair. But for the overall shape of the shell, now kind of in position. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's now, the first thing I'm going to do is start filling it up with oil. So in the next video, as part of this series... I'll be doing, um, collecting all of the crude oil around here. It's 2,800 crude oil, I think, in this area. We've got to find a way to combine it all and send it along a pipe, bring it up one of the legs of the core. So I'm in the core right now, but we're on the second floor. The place is actually even bigger than it seems. Because we have a whole other room down here. I guess I can just do it from down here. There you go. <laughs> right, anyways, this would be one of the big legs for the uh, shell.
I don't think I've built doorway out of this yet. Not that it even needs one, really. I hoard my Excel sheets. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the tops of the pillars have to be done, but after that, I think that's it then. It'll just be down to customizing them individually to, based on where machines end up going, like putting in some windows and walkways and stuff that come in and out of the uh, the actual building itself. That's it. It's a monumental build. I'm glad we thickened up the pillars. It definitely looks way better because of it. It looks awesome. Looking forward to seeing it complete. I guess I have to get planning. Yes. Oh, I'll also, this is that's the train line right there. So, just don't know how we can get that to go in there smoothly, but I'll find a way. I think I need some hyper tubes as well because it is it does take a long time just to get, excuse me, up to the damn thing. It's so large. Not all of it needs to really be that large as well. Only a couple of these hexes actually warrant the size that. It's needed. Like some of them have 120 refiners, so they do need a lot of space. But after that, ultimately they don't. They are, they have two floors. Most of them are just going to use up the bottom. And then there's the roof as well. Really, if you wanted to do something with that. Um, but anyway, that's going to have to be it for this video um, and this stream. So we'll leave it at that. I wanted to shout out as well. Thanks to the channel members and the super chats. Always appreciate that. Helps keep the streams going. Um, but I appreciate all the viewers, of course, just in general. That also helps. But. Uh, that music, there we go. Um, but yep, yeah, both are greatly appreciated. It's always hard to say that, you know? It's like, obviously, I really appreciate the channel members and stuff, but I do, of course, appreciate just people being here, chatting with me, and hanging out, giving me feedback, giving me great tips, such as those Mark III miners. Never would have thought of it. Don't know why. Just hadn't really, really thought about the fact that I'm at that level where I can make those. Ah, oh, look at him. He's flying so far out there. Thanks for the chill stream again. See you all next week. Yep, every Monday. Remember, you can join my Discord, discord.gg slash WDP. I was hoping of doing a multiplayer server for update 8. It is just too unstable at the moment, but maybe in the future, once we get a bit more stability there, we'll definitely do that. And, of course, I'm doing City Skylines as well. And if you want to join my Discord, I'm just in there all the time. You don't have to be a member or anything. You just hop in there, chat with me a bit more if you wanted to. Uh, there's different categories for satisfactory City Skylines, Anno, and then also just general chat rooms and screenshots and food. All the good stuff. Build a train station into the inset floor underneath the main structure on each tower. You say the last stream that there is an there is an inset floor under. I don't know what an inset floor necessarily means. There's no logistical floor on these things. It's just one floor there and one floor there and then the top. And they could be broken into four floors if I really wanted to. There's a lot of space. But we'll see. Alright guys, that's gonna have to be it. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll try to get a video out soon for Satisfactory. It's just that with Update 8 being a bit botched for me, I wasn't really able to. It kind of threw my plans off. So still working on getting things ready so we can get that oil up to here and start powering on Strut F as part of the first thing we do. Alright, that's gotta be it. Goodbye!